I noticed in the end of your video that you said that Shinky's Cordovan is the best Cordovan. And I just wanted to understand <laughs> why. <laughs> why you said that. <laughs> what I actually said at the end was, I'm not saying that these other tanneries don't make amazing leathers as well. And that yeah. Halloween makes great Cordovan and, and uh, you know, who are, someone else makes great suede and they're all good. I'm just putting out a list of people who make really good ones. But yeah, a lot of people really like that. That Shinky Cordovan. Are you the guy who just commented on that uh, video a couple hours ago? It said, Shinky Cordovan looks like plastic. It sucks. Because I got that comment. Like, <laughs> today. <laughs> It was you, we'll wasn't see. it? <laughs> so today we've got a really special guest. We've got Nick from Stridewise. We're going to talk everything leather and perhaps a bunch of stuff not leather. Try to have a wide-ranging conversation about all the stuff that Nick's experiencing. Uh, my hope is that he's going to pop Nick Horween's and my bubble of uh, Horween leathers because we, we are definitely isolated, Nick. Speak for yourself. Uh, but yeah, what, do you, fair. what do you guys say we start the show here, okay? Let's do it. Nick English. This is going to be terrible for me, by the way, with the two Nicks. I'll, I'll get over Should we it. have, should we come up with different nicknames or something? I used to, my, my middle name is like Jim. Sometimes people call me Jim, Jim if you want, if that makes it easier. All right, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's terrible. <laughs> that's terrible. We're not going to do that. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> uh, uh, Nick, welcome to the show. I understand that you've just recently picked up your first pair of uh, Shell Cordovan stuff. How's, how's that working out for you? Oof. It's uh, it's a little overwhelming. It's it's very shocking and embarrassing that it's taken this long to get Cordovan footwear. I am quite happy that I've got it right here actually. I am happy that up. my first Cordovan is still secondhand Cordovan, and it's uh, an olden wingtip. So that's that's pretty exciting. And um, and I've also got an Indonesian brand uh, Midas footwear. They're sending me some green Cordovan boots. But I shockingly, yeah, I haven't had green boots before. I've also got Crown Northampton. That famous sneaker place with, with some Halloween shell cordovan sneakers that I just got. So, yeah, it was like this month after five, six years of doing boot and leather stuff that I got I, I got my first cordovan, <laughs> which is very embarrassing. But I'm meeting with the guy, uh, Shel Shelvage. He's uh, on, on, on Instagram and YouTube. Mm -hmm, uh, he's David. coming to town actually on, yeah, David. He's coming to town on Wednesday or Thursday, and uh, he's going to give me crash courses in cordovan. We're going to film some stuff. Hopefully it works out. Some shoot but, uh, picks, I'm sure, coming. Yeah, quite coming. a lot. Like, I was, like, trying to research these videos, and I'm coming across all the deer bone stuff, and I was like, what, what? Like, I've heard of it, but I've never dived in. And why, why, does, a, why does a deer bone help Cordovan? What's the we, deal? We've talked about this. We talked about this maybe, like, a few episodes ago. It's just, it's a, uh, I, I don't know. I think that, I think it's just a smooth surface that's supposed to be, like kind of infused with oils and like a little bit greasy. I've used them and I think that you can do the same thing with a metal spoon with like just the back of a, a metal spoon. Cause it's just, it's just something that's smooth. Like if you get, if you get a scratch that's, that's really directional, it's like a little bit deeper. You can kind of push it back into place, like line all the fibers back up again. And the traditional idea is that you use the, the shin bone of a deer, but they're all, they all look exactly the same. I'm a little skeptical, I guess, is what I'm saying. But, the deer bones um, definitely have some nourishing oils in them for sure. They do. Yeah, they do. Impart your own and then use a, yeah. a spoon. You can impart your own, like you can put oils on the bone and then... No, like on the shoe or on the leather. And then oh, you right. use just a, just a conditioner. Yeah. So I guess it depends on how recently the animal died then, right? Because the bones will dry out, right? See, get this dark. Is, this is the... This, this is the... Uh, <laughs> this is what, you're already you're, you're going down my cynical lane already. <laughs> I mean, we are talking about dead animal hides here, you know. I mean, it's oh yeah. It's, no. Let's let's all be mindful of it and be be thankful to these animals that unwillingly gave their lives. We we'll just pretend it was willingly done. Then. Well, a lot of the oils that I know that you're a fan of the Chromexel leather, and uh, a lot of the oils that are the big the big oil that you are experiencing on Chromexel or one of the several is Neat's foot oil, which that also comes from a. A shin bone. The rended of shin burns of So there's tallow. something there. That's true. There's also a lot of beef tallow in Chromex Hill. Food grade beef tallow and cosmetic grade beeswax. When I was there, I visited Hawaii last, was it last year? Maybe it was the year before. 
uh, and I, I I did my best to get the recipe um, the recipe out of Skip, but all he would do is just confirm the things that I knew. I just, beef tallow, industrial, cosmetic grade beeswax, needs fit oil, and I know it used to have whale oil, right? We don't do that anymore. You just mix it all that up and you just put it in a, a, <laughs> a bucket and it comes out right every time. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> it is a. Uh, it is delightful how just how just everyone has landed on Chrome XL being the best boot leather. Like it doesn't matter if it's like a two hundred or a thousand dollar or a fifteen hundred. Like I've got I've I've worked with these brands that they're selling they're selling boots for for four figures and they've they've always got Chrome XL as like the standout. Just well, let me let me go there. Right. there. Nick Horwin's going to be concerned by this line, but <laughs> just I know Nick Nick Horwin. I'll, I'll I'll start calling you Jim and then Nick. <laughs> we could just do we could just do Nick. How about Nick and Nick H? I'll be Nick H. All right. I'll go with a slightly longer name since I'm uh, not the guest. Well, Nick H is always concerned about overrepresenting his tannery, even though it's completely appropriate this year experience and what a lot of people want to know about. But yeah, that did seem very paid for how I said, isn't it crazy how the world's best <laughs> yes. boot leather is whole ween well, so that's, XL? That's actually the question here, Nick, is <laughs> do you actually Agree with that? I mean, I know I know it's hard to answer with the, <laughs> the guy that made the leather here on the other other end of the line, but you know, I like Chrome Excel, but I like other leathers too. I mean, you think there's is it legitimately good or just is it somehow this name has just become attached to all these different brands as a marketing ploy? I don't know. You know, it's funny when I get asked something like, what's the best boot leather or what's the best boot uh, or, or, or anything like that, my mind doesn't go to what do I think? It, it goes to like, what what is going to, what answer is going to be the most useful and the most applicable to the most guys? Because I run a website that like tops Google when people search best boot leather, best boots and whatever else, you know? So it's like for the average guy. It's like if someone just comes up to me, like no matter who it is, and they're like, oh, I want to get a pair of boots. Uh, I don't know where to start. What's like a good leather? Like, no, I definitely, I'd say Chrome Excel. You can find a boot Chrome Excel. Like it just, it just, it appeals to everyone. It's got a good balance of like the 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 luster. It ages very well. It's uh, uh, it's just it's very highly regarded. It's tough and yeah, that's that's what I that's what that's what I recommend to the average person. Not for not me, what I personally. A... No, it's yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's factual that it appeals to the most people. Like, it's just every company makes sure they have a Chrome XL boot. And oftentimes, they only do Chrome XL. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, for me, what I, I, I mean, at the moment, I really like, uh, I, I'm really into rough out leathers, which is a boring thing to say. But I have these, I've got some Chrome XL. Look, Chrome XL is great. It's wonderful. And I did take these boots somewhere they, they didn't necessarily uh, belong. But I've got these whites in Chrome XL. And I don't know if you can see it, but... I gouged out a lot of it. I was hiking up a volcano in Guatemala and uh, it that's not something you can rub out. Like it's, it is deep down. The Pali volcanic rocks are extra sharp. So, you know, that's not Chrome Excel's fault, but I, it's true. I couldn't stop thinking about like rough out, like it's not as lustrous, but it's really scratch resistant and I really like it. And I'm also just like, I went unwaxed rough out. So I've got, I've got a boot shelf right here. I'm looking at multiple boots. So I've got some grizzly rough out from, uh, uh, Seidel, I think it is the brown one on Truman boots, and I've got natural Chrome XL rough out here as well. Yeah, I mean, you kind of nailed the, the the one of the big negatives of Chrome XL is it doesn't it doesn't tend to have much scratch or abrasion resistance. Now that I, yeah. I would say that's you know when you're so I used to sell a lot of Chrome XL wallets and leather goods and stuff, and we kind of moved away from it actually because people would scratch it. And not realize that those scratches kind of just blend back in just with normal use, which is true. Mm -hmm. But people don't, they don't want to spend X dollars, like a high amount of money uh, on a boot. And they go like, this thing scratched immediately. It, there's this cognitive dissonance that people have where it's like, what do you mean like this is good? It's scratching, you know? So I think people have a, I think a, a mass, like the mass market, like wide world of people that will buy a leather piece of footwear wouldn't necessarily think Chrome Excel is great for that reason. I think a lot of people want impervious, perfect all the time. Yeah, you're, you're kind of hitting on this this divide between boot guys and gen pop 
you know, which, which is something that I'm always hitting up against with the content I make, especially the longer I make it and the more, you know, people I meet in the space and the more, the deeper you dive and the more niche that you get. And there's, there's really, there are boot guys, you know, who think it's perfectly reasonable to wait six months for a pair of boots to arrive at your door. That will be terribly uncomfortable for the first like two months and spend a zillion dollars on it. And then there's like the average person who would just look at you like you're an insane person if, if, if you told them that was a good idea. And it's like, yeah, boot guys, they like Chrome XL leather. And obviously Chrome XL has tremendous appeal. You know, like a better description of these guys would be natural Mariam horse, but leather buyers and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, it's always funny having like navigating these areas where it's like, at this point, I'm definitely a boot guy and I'm in this world of the, the guys who are kind of too into it and I'm fully aware and I own that I'm too into it myself. <laughs> but I'm still going to try and make my content like useful for the average person who is just searching stuff like what's a good mock toe boot under 300 bucks. You know what I mean? Um, so that's, that's always something I've got to, I've got to toe the line of. So I try to, we were saying this before we hit record. I try to do like some videos and articles that have like really broad appeal, uh, you know, because that's what helps me pay my rent. And also it's those people deserve useful information as well. But then I also try and do like, I just did like a 20 minute, a video about Sagara in Indonesia uh, about their Norwegian hand welted uh, Mariam horse butt monkey boots with a double mid sole. Like all these things that like you need like five minutes to explain each one of those elements. So like I had so much fun doing that, and I knew that you know it wasn't going to go as well as best mock toe boots under three hundred bucks. But it's all right, you know, do both. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of industry uh, definitions that need to be uh, there's a, there's a lot of prerequisite knowledge to understand what you yeah, just yeah, said. Exactly. <laughs> there's actually a line that I said in my uh, you know Unmarked that company in, in Mexico they're doing a uh, luxury casual boots I guess like sort of like Viberg ish um, that same category I mean but yeah there was there's a point in that video where I was like all right so this is for boot guys and if you if you know the words Chrome XL and stitch down construction and day night soul and there was one more but like they're, they're, these four things like the average person in the street doesn't know what those are but if you know what those four words mean then you also would know that this is a pretty good value boot for only 490 bucks you know whereas the average person would not, this, that's nothing is like that for a pair, for a pair of boots <laughs> but if you're a boot guy and you know you understand that this is handstone stitched down it's extra laborious so it's worth a bit of extra money and so on and so on then it's good so I think I've gotten good at that lately, like just trying to trying to be really clear about who something appeals to and who it doesn't, you know, because um, I've got after this long doing it, I've got a, a good perspective with the whole stuff, I think I like to think anyway. I think your perspective is actually, you know, having you on the show here, that, that was the thing I was most curious about. Again, like burst in my Halloween bubble. One of the questions there, when you're in Indonesia, I know a lot of the people in the stitch down group are really into those Indonesian boot makers and the products are undeniably beautiful and really mm -hmm. different than the American style and Pacific Northwest style. Certainly. Do you have a sense of where the market is for the people that are buying those Indonesian shoes? Is it mostly for the American market? Yeah, I asked uh, each of the brands I hung out with. So I did, I did videos currently unreleased of uh, subscribe to my YouTube. You'll find them. Eventually, I did it. I went to Sagara and Brizzle Black, formerly known as Benzene and Underhad, and those are in decreasing size of business. Like a cigar, I think had like eight or nine full timers, and Underhad had three. Um, and yeah, they most of their business goes to America. I know Sagara, it was it was over fifty percent. Um, it, it might have just been on fifty percent. Uh, and yeah, these guys usually it's like. 20% Indonesian or something. And otherwise it's going to, uh, I think Japan. There's a, there's a bit of Chinese interest as well, which is like, I mean, not surprising given the rise of, you know, Iron Boots and XPXS and Flame Panda and all these guys. But yeah, fair enough goes there. Anyway, but the, to answer your question, yeah, most of them, most of the market is in America. And also like all three of those brands uh, were swimming in natural, Mariam horse, but that's just all guys are getting these days. That's like the number. I'm sorry, it's not Halloween, but like just that's the trend at the moment. Just, yeah, yeah right. Song. I'm looking at a pair of uh, Oak Street Derbies <laughs> right now as well. Yeah, 
Yeah, the thing about that is if we were to make more, like if we at Horwin, if we were to make more of that kind of stuff, then we would be able to make less Cordovan. So we just, we have to make the choice and that's the choice that we're making at the moment. But yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting stuff. I mean, it's, 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 um, yeah, it's funny. Like stuff. last week I, uh, I bumped into the guys, uh, at Thursday boots cause I'm friends with Nate, uh, uh Cuffington on Instagram. Um, and we were meeting up and, uh, and yeah. And I was like, do you guys ever think about doing like a moose leather boot or like a kangaroo leather boot and that kind of stuff? And they were like, well, no, we're, we're Thursday boots. Like we, you know, that's that's like the third boot of a boot guy would get that. And whereas we are trying to appeal to the general population here and <laughs> they're unlikely to get something that sounds so weird. Uh, and that's that's knowing their market. So, yeah, it's funny just in the I mean, it shouldn't be that surprising because boots are just footwear that is kind of water resistant and uh, kind of durable. And there's like a lot of different people that will buy those. Like it's not just Viber guys and it's not just like a. Uh, uh, you know, blue collar guys who need something for the construction side or whatever. Like there's a whole bunch of different people out there who buy boots. And that's one of the most annoying things as well on, you know, on YouTube and the YouTube comments. It's just always guys complaining about like, if you're not a working man, you shouldn't be wearing boots and blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's like, it's just an extra stable shoe, man. I have, a little, I have a little shame there because in a past episode, I was talking about the relevancy of how durable a leather upper needs to be. And I was saying like people are overblowing this leather durability thing like i've never blown through an upper and i've worn some stuff pretty hard and then i asked people to leave comments or send me photos and people are like i do actual work dude and i blow through <laughs> yeah. holes in these things so they have to be pretty tough you know so i, I get it do you ever uh, do you, i'm sure you guys both do a lot of boot and shoe peeking but in chicago i think it's a lot different scene of people wearing kind of these types of footwear, like I don't think I'm going to see even Alden. I don't see in Chicago, but in New York, you see a lot of people wearing maybe the, the Indonesian stuff. Or what do you what do you see people wearing? Thursday boots and Red Wing. Yeah, and it's more Thursday than anyone else. And uh, that's not a plug. That's just because they're 200 bucks and everything else is 300 bucks. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> it's one reason anyway. And they also they market a lot. Um, but when I but yeah, I always look at what people what shoes people are wearing. Uh, New York is always getting built. There's always construction sites. There's always working dudes. I'm always looking at their boots. It's it's never Red Wing or or Thursday or Alden or Knicks or any, any of these. It's all you know. It's all Rock Rooster and uh, Thoroughgood and that sort of thing. Um, and but as far as like yeah, the regular guys. Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's not the Pacific Northwest. I feel like. I feel like the the sturdy welted boot as as a daily driver thing, and uh, I, I feel like it's more common actually in other cities than than in New York. You know, like mm. like here wh when it rains, everyone just is instantly like the second a drop of rain hits the ground, everyone's wearing uh, bean boots. And I guess we're no, we're not New England. I guess we're Northeast. But I'm always like, you don't need waterproof boots just because it's raining. Like Gucci welted boots are gonna be fine. Those boots are so ugly. <laughs> like I get that they're iconic and important, but like you can just get a Gucci welted boot. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's a uh, there's there's a lot of decent footwear. There's a cobbler on every street block in New York, which is really funny because uh, you just it's a very walkable city. People are just walking, walking all the time, wearing through their shoes. So it's actually I th I feel like I've never seen this many cobblers uh, in such a so densely packed into an area um but but yeah that said it'll be they'll they'll red wing they'll red wing they'll thursday and otherwise it's like alan edmonds like dress shoes the you know the corporate people you know mm -hmm. and i know you mm -hmm. spend a bunch of time or i don't know how much time have you spent in europe i was gonna say a bunch of time but i don't know <laughs> <laughs> how much time total probably a few years yeah so i'm assuming footwear is much different in europe than the united states too or at least my understanding when I, we were when I was working for Nick Horween, uh, we would supply a lot of leathers, not a lot, but uh, some leather to Europe. And the the footwear that we saw being produced there was of a different level of quality, I'd say. Like, and it, it was told to me that, you know, these people want to wear a pair of shoes for years and years and years. It's a little bit of a different culture when it comes to their footwear. I was just curious if, you know, since you've been there more than me, what's, what, what you feel? Like, <laughs> is, is that true? Yeah, I mean, the the aesthetic, it's funny. I think to the average person, they wouldn't be able to tell the difference between, you know, like a, a 
a trick is or a crocodile and Jones boot and you know, I don't know, a Grand Stone or an Oak Street or Red Wing, that sort of thing. You know, I, so I think to a lot of people they look the same, but to, to guys like us, they look they look very different. Yeah, the shoes there, they're like Loke is a really big brand. And there's Trickers, of course, which like, you know, the King Charles wears and they got the Royal Seal and they're all very excited about that. And, and I visited those guys and it's Crockett and Jones and there's all these guys. And yeah, it's a, it's a different aesthetic, but I would agree that like quality footwear is that people are just a little bit less likely to be wearing sneakers. You know, they, they've got a bit more of that heritage tradition of like wearing a proper stable welted shoe around town sort of thing, you know? That's cool. I'm yeah, but the but I, I'm always getting emails from people being like, you should review more British shoes. And and like, I can't find any of these things that you talk about all the time in, in England. And it's it's actually kind of surprising. They do, they are different aesthetics. You know, like like a like a red wing and a trick is you know it's hard to put my finger on sometimes exactly what it is, but uh, they are uh, they do even if it's the same construction like they'll they'll still be Goodyear welted, but uh, they just they're a little more stelt. Those it's British the shape. It's the la the last shape is the thing that sticks out to me. It's like always a little yeah. bit. There's like more. There's more space between the end of your toe and the end of the boot. And it's mm -hmm. supposed to be that way. So it's like they're like a little bit long, like more elongated, like a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. I do uh, I do work with Carmina a little bit, um, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, that's that Spanish. It's not English, but it's a it's a similar sort of thing. Like I have I have a pair of shoes. I have a pair of loafers, actually, like really dressy, dressy, dressy loafers. And uh, they're so pointy. And when you look at them, you would, you know, surely no one would ever fit into this. But no, it's just it's just empty space. Mm. And uh, and somehow it doesn't look too long. You know, they, they design them that way just to be to be pointier. It's, yeah, that's funny. Now it's summer and everyone's talking about loafers. Mm -hmm. to... yeah, I'm not. I'm not a. Lo I've never been a loafer guy. I've always wanted to be able to wear a loafer, and I just am not. I'm just not. I. It took me a few years to try to dress nice in summer because, as an Australian, uh, you know, the winter. This level of cold, like this kind of autumn and winter, is is very exciting to me, and I'll like you know, dress up, dress nice, dress American. But once it's summer, like my latent Australian brain just like wakes up and takes over, and I'm just like walking around in like flip flops and workout shorts, and it's and I just I just can't dress nice in summer. But like the the last the last like couple of years, I figured it out. I found some nice linen shirts, and I started getting into loafers, and I was like, okay, I can I can do this, and. uh yeah, I, it's good at the moment. I'm all, I'm always going back and forth between Oak Street and Grant Stone loafers. I think those are the two, they're the two best for like totally different reasons. And because I do stuff on the internet, I had to do a best loafers list last year. And I, the the amount of time I spent agonizing over whether it was Oak Street or Grant Stone was very hard. <laughs> like Grant Stone's looks better, but Oak Street has so much much. It's like it's genuine hand sewn, which like no one does. It's made in America. It's cheaper than Grand Stone even. It's unlined and it's Blake stitch, so it's a lot easier to wear barefoot, all that kind of stuff. But Grand Stone's is such a good looking loafer. Mm -hmm. yeah, they good. they both do nice though. work. I'm yeah. I I like the I like the if I were to wear a loafer, <laughs> the <laughs> uh, the unlined um, Alden color eight loafer. Is, yeah, that's, that's a personal favorite of mine. But th those are not always around. But yeah, they, I'm I think a little some biased. of them just came out. Uh, Teacher Blanco, the the what is that guy's job anyway? Mysterious boot marketing man, Teacher <laughs> Teacher Blanco. He's he's uh, coming to town on Friday, and uh, we were having the same conversation about Alden loafers, Grandstone loafers, and he's he's bringing he's bringing his, and we're going to do a whole 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 talk about. Alden versus Grant Stone loafers. <laughs> I'm pretty sure but he I kind of works, want some, uh, some Alden loafers now as well. I was looking on uh, on Grailed and eBay. I was like, surely I can find some. And I had some brown suede. I found some tassel loafers in my size. And I'm not sure about that tassel. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm a zero I on tassel. Sorry. I'm into tassels. I'm into tassels. <laughs> you like a tassel? Yeah. With I like, like long pants. Yeah, yeah. Like with like white jeans. That kind of, you know, like a nice linen button up maybe. I'm into it. I'm but, into a. a Ox blood or a brown suede tassel. I could. I think that works. I think you really do want loafers. Like, I do. You're I really want. I really want to make it work. Yeah, I, want. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to make it work. And then I put them on, and I maybe I'm, I've got. I don't have the proportions for it. And I feel like I'm standing on very a very small platform. But maybe it's because I'm so, I'm so used to wearing more robust, beefy stuff all the time. Maybe if I maybe if I just maybe it's a 
it's a, like a body dysmorphia thing. <laughs> I need to, I need to like, I need to like <laughs> wear the loafers and just get over myself for for a few for I, a few days. I think what's funny about it, like like as as an Australian, I didn't grow up with any. There's 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 no it the, the nice footwear doesn't get split down into. There's like the beefy work boots, then there's the guys who wear loafers, and there's the guys who wear like a nice Oxford, and there's a guy who wears like a Chelsea boots. Like we don't have any nice welted footwear at all anywhere in the nation of Australia, except for Iron Williams, which is the only boot that anyone owns. And it's also like 600 bucks, so you don't get one until you're 30. Uh, but anyway, the point being that when I came here, I was at a zero on everything. Like I was just mm-hmm. like, so so all, every every kind of welted shoe was like new and exciting to me. And I could like just, just try all of them. I didn't have any... I wasn't I wasn't fossilized into any one particular tranche. The hang up with the loafers <laughs> though is you've really got to get the size like just right cuz there's not much Yeah. There's not much else to hold you in. Yeah, easier with a loafer than a Chelsea though, I think. So I think if you can if you know if you know your size well enough to get a Chelsea boot that fits, I think you can figure out the loafer. Yeah, and for me I'm like a I'm a wingtips guy in in the summer. Even I don't know if that's stupid or not, but I kind of always wear. I think jeans and wingtips look really cool. So that's like, and I kind of only wear jeans. Have you earned? I don't. I don't. I'm curious about the Crown Northampton stuff in general. I I, I really like it, and obviously they're a, a customer, but I I don't own any of their stuff yet. Have you worn them? I uh, just they look pretty new. Yeah, yeah, they are. I uh, they 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 arrived a couple months ago, but I was like, no, I'm gonna wait until summer. Um, but I'm I'm about to go to, uh, and maybe this is a bad idea. I'm about to go to Thailand and Vietnam for like about a month, and I'm sort of like, and I'm like, well, oh, I'm gonna be wearing sneakers. I'm wearing shorts for the first time since like last year. I'll wear my Cordovan sneakers. Is that a, is that a dumb idea? This no. here's the thing with Cordovan: is it super durable or not? Like it is, but it isn't. But it, it is. is. It is right. It but is, it's meant yeah. to be not that great with water, right? No, it's it's good with water. The the like the main it's vegetarian. Yeah, I mean the main thing with Cordovan is that it's it is like a total pain in the ass through like the construction process. To make it, like when, yeah, yeah, when you're I making a shoe out of it, it's a total it's it's not easy to work with. But once once you coax it into like an actual shoe and it's made the right way, like it's mm. super abrasion resistant. It's tough. It's a little bit. I mean, it's it's heavier and it's pretty dense. But it's very. I mean, if it gets wet, it might look a little bit different. If it dries unevenly, which is which, which invariably does, but you can always bring you can always bring it back with brushing, or you can rewet yeah, it, or you can yeah, put a little bit of can. conditioner on it and brush it a ton. But that's, yeah, no, it's, that's the it's, thing. Like as a this is another divide between boot guys and normal guys. Like boot guys, uh, they love vegetable tan leather so much, and it has a lot of pros. Uh, but one one of the the many cons, uh, yeah, not as not as good with water, and it'll. It can it can stain a little bit more easily than chrome tan. What do you guys think? Yeah, mm. it's not. As, I mean, it's not as strong either. I mean, that's why you don't see it. It's it's one of the. Re- I mean, it's more expensive to make, but also it's, mm. it's harder to. I mean, you can't. It's not heat resistant and it's not as strong in terms of tensile strength. So like all like like is Thursday because really I know because well, I know chrome tan is more elastic. Like it stretches more. That's it's one of the reasons why it's easier to break in than veg tan. But is it the tensile strength as well? Is is not as good because I was always told that. Because the tanning process is less harsh on the fibers in the in the skin, vegetable tan relative to, to chrome tanning, you know, because because it's slow cooked leather, right? So, uh, uh, and I know that's one reason why people. This is obviously subjective. Think it ages better. Um, and I'm not. I'm not. An, I'm not the veg tan or bust guy, you know. So in my first like couple of years, and I was figuring this out, you know, I went through my phases of you know it's all veg tan all the time, and then realizing oh actually there's, there's about like ten reasons why chrome tan can be better. But I really thought the well, I guess there's a difference between it being long lasting and it being strong, I suppose. But what, what do you think of the arguments that it's long wanna, lasting? I'm going to interrupt Nick before he answers because everybody knows that Nick is biased. But the, the real answer here is like you're missing a big part of it. So it's not it's not as simple as saying like chrome tan versus veg mm. tan because yeah, in yeah, each yeah. of those categories, there's so much because yeah, you're right. For example, Nick. I knew that, and I still fell into it having this conversation. It's just easy <laughs> to think in binary terms. Like you know, you let, just, your, your brain just wants to categorize things really simply. I'm gonna let Phil answer, but then I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna say that I'm actually, I'm I'm gonna give myself some credit. I think I think that since we do, we actually do tan both, which is not, which is very uncommon to do both both veg 
tanning and chrome tanning in the same building that I might be qualified to answer this question, but go ahead, <laughs> <laughs> all right, go for it. Nick. You're right. <laughs> I'm persuaded. No, I no, I want to hear what you say first. Please go ahead. No, no, no. Like in each of those categories of veg tan and chrome tanning, it's so wide. It's, it's like saying what's better, a uh, pickup truck or a go kart. And be like, well, if like I'm on a go kart track, I can't drive the pickup <laughs> truck. So you know, like there's certain reasons that they both exist. So it really, and then it, it's more, it's more about the tannage. So you, there is of course the base tannage, which could be chrome or veg, or there's other like fundamental base tannages. But then there's this other thing called the retannage that yeah. further refines the the material. That's yeah. like equally important. And then mm. that is sort of infinite. You can have so much different variation within the retanage, even on the same base chrome tannage. And backing up there is like, there's also an infinite range of chrome tan, like base tannages from every tannery does it a little bit differently. So it gets hard to, yeah, of course. it's hard to just baby with bathwater all of it. <laughs> but since Nick does both of them, why don't you tell us, Nick? No, I, th I think that you're on the right track. There's so many different ways to do it. I think. I mean, I think that the main the main distinction is is the chrome tan stuff is just by nature of the the mineral involved is always going to be more heat resistant and well. I, I shouldn't say always. Mo is is the reason to use chrome over just pure like a pure veg, you know, tree bark tannage is that you'll get you get more heat resistance and more tensile strength, which is what I just said. And, and, but you sort of get that at the expense of, uh, sort of like a, a dense feeling, like a big, like a rounder, like, like just more, yeah, I mean, dense feeling. And then the, the aging is the, the aging characteristics are real. I mean, the veg tanned stuff patina is more because there's, you're actually, I mean, there's, there's tree barks in there. There's more natural materials in there from start to finish, which are just, which just want to oxidize and change color and, and age more. It's very but, unstable. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's but that's but that's where you start to get into, you know. There's you can sort of or you can decide how how, how much chrome is in there. You know, is it three percent? Is it six percent? I mean, th that is a big determination on it. And then the retainage, that can be a chrome retainage, and that would be a very strong leather. Or you can do a veg retainage. You can do chrome still, thrust and veg retainage, which the, which is sort of giving you you're sort of trying to like you know give you something that has really good performance characteristics, but also is going to you know feel really nice and age really well. So there's the spectrum, like like everything else, is pretty is pretty wide. But the traditional stuff is, I mean, there's a reason it's still around because it is it does like if you talk about like the oak the oak bark tan like sole leathers, like there's just no way that I'm aware of to get that kind of like density in a product without using the tree bark. It's just just from a chemistry standpoint, like the structures themselves are just denser and larger and, but it takes, it takes a long time. So it's, there's, I mean, they're massive, there are massive trade-offs, but. Um, I have a question. I, I was in, I went to CF Stead last year, the famous tannery in England. Great video, and, by the way. Uh, I, I really appreciated that one. Thanks for doing. Oh, you the, like it? Yeah. Thanks. You're doing God's yeah, work. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to convey everything that's going on and, uh, in, in, in those videos, but yeah, that was, that was really cool. But I, I, they had leathers that wasn't, that weren't veg or chrome tan, which I'd heard about those existing, but no one ever talks about them. I think they called it white tan. Yeah, like that, an aldehyde. Like, wet white. It's yeah. like a synthetic, yeah, it's like a synthetic, it's like a synthetic, like veg, like resin, I guess is kind of like the best way to, so it's not, it's not either, you know, it's just, um. So it's a, I mean, it's like a non-chrome base tannage is the way to think about it. So you, it gives you something that's stronger than a veg and more heat resistant than a veg, like a pure veg would be, but doesn't have quite the strength that a pure chrome would be. But then it doesn't contain chrome. So there's benefits, there are benefits there in terms of, well, perceived benefits, I suppose, in terms mm -hmm. of, in terms of the market, but. Chromium six and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for, it was, it, it gained a lot of traction in the tanning industry because it was for and i don't think it's that way anymore but for a long time it was cheaper to do it that to do that than to chrome tan so a lot of like the big especially like the car upholstery places um 
went, switched, were switching over to that because they were able to do large scale produ- production and save a little bit of money. And the product was, it, it wasn't, I wouldn't say it was better or worse. It was just, it was just a little bit different, but it was still suitable. So that, so that was, that was like the big, the big move to, to that. That sort of well, that, that sort of pushed the technology forward, I guess. But there's, I mean, the, the the weird one of the weird things about manufacturing in general is that sort of the ideas and the regulations and are always changing. And uh, wet white is one of those things that they're just taking a look at right now because the technology is not that old. I mean, it's just it, mm. compared to everything else that's out there, it's just not that old. But are there any other ways of tanning that's not veg or chrome or white? Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, you could do, I mean, yeah, al- they good. use, you can use other minerals like aluminum is the other one that's com that's more common, but not that common anymore. And we do, you know, there's, there's so many different ways to do a veg tannage. I mean, the different bark tree bark blends, sure. there's, you know, so many different ways. And then there's, we've been doing, uh, something that's called olive tanning or wet green. I was about to, I was about to ask about that. I mean, I assume that's just called it's a type of veg tanning. But it's, it's yeah, still technically, fairly yeah, I mean, new, more right? or less. People seem very excited about the olive stuff right now. Yeah, I mean, it's, so it's using instead of using like the synthetic vegetable base or the traditional tree bark base or the chrome, it's it's like they're using the um, the byproduct of the olive industry. So the, the they're taking they're extracting all the tannins from the leaves. So it's a it's great that it's you know that it's another byproduct that can be used and made into something else. But it's still pretty new. I mean, we're, we've been you doing it for maybe four years at this point, maybe five years. And the first, I think the first two years that we did it, we just like didn't really know how to do it. And, but we've, it's just, I mean, it was fine. It was, a, it was a fine product. It just like wasn't, it didn't really speak to me at least, but it's, it's been getting more and more interesting just because it's a completely different base. You have to figure out what to do and, and, and how to work it. But um, so it, it would sort of categorize as vegetable tanning, it, be, it being plant matter, but it, but it's like, a, it's very different to other, any other veg tanning that's been done before. Yeah. Just the, yeah, the, the, the certification pro, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a proprietary thing, which is one of the, the things that makes it different is that there's a company that developed it and then you have to get certified and they come and they teach you how to do it. And then they are going to test the products that you make to make sure that they don't contain Chrome. And then they're all of it's meeting all of their requirements. And mm. so it's, it's interesting. It's interesting because it's, it's kind of a standalone product in that way. But, but yeah, I would say, I would say that it's like a veg, like it, just a veg that anyone would think of, but it's a little bit <laughs> fluffier. Yeah. That's yeah. A, that's Nick, a term. Nick H. Like, I was going to ask you that. So what, what would you say is the inherent quality of the olive tan? Because exactly like you said, my observation from your early tannages off the olive wet green base were kind of fluffy. And what I mean by that is like the, the fibers weren't, weren't as dense as like a traditional veg. Um, and when you push your finger into it, there's a, a significant bit of give, like a, like in a way that your head would sit into a pillow, kind of sits in there a bit. And so the puffy feeling, I don't know if that was because of the inherent like olive tannage or if your retannage on top was purposely done that way. I think it was more the retainage, to be honest. I think it's we because it's it's it is is less dense as a base, and we just have to learn how to how to fill it in and make it in, you know, into like a product that we want to make because that less that spongier, fluffier, softer, whatever how you want to say a product is a little more ubiquitous, I guess. Like there's just more people do it, and that's just not not to say that's a bad thing, but I think that you know we're do we do lots of by hand and we're expensive. So I think that we have to sort of make, we have to kind of step above, I guess a little bit of what, above what we were doing initially is kind of my feeling, but, but it's, um, it's still, it's still super interesting. I, I like, I like what we're doing on it now, but it's expensive. It's, you, you should know, do another, like a wet green tannage and then like pit tan retan with bark. That might be kind of, I wonder do if that it. just defeats the purpose though, right? It's like, we're doing this olive tan to not use tree barks. I think it's part of the goal, right? Not necessarily. I mean, you could still. I can see like the 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 hook being that it's, it's if you're able to say this is 100 percent use uh, you tanned with byproducts from this industry as opposed to like no one's cut down a tree during the process. Like that's probably a big marketing part for it. Sure, I got invited yeah. to a, a, a an event a few a few weeks ago. Uh, this random luxury bag company, and you know it's just New York. You know you go to the opening of an envelope. From, Let's get these PR emails, and I'm like, all right. Um, but anyway, they they had that leather. They had the uh, the olive tanned leather uh, for their bags, uh, and I was just sort of thinking, I haven't seen 
I could be wrong. I feel like I haven't seen it on on much footwear. Like, is it is it too spongy for footwear? Or am I just not seeing the right product? Yeah, no, it's not. I mean, Alan Emmons used some of it. I mean, the, I think the probably the most the, maybe the only place that I can remember being called out was the Patagonia boot that they did. That's bison, and they were doing like they were taking in Patagonia fashion. They were taking the animals and they were making like their Patagonia provisions like jerky out of all the meat, and then they were sending the hides to us and then we were olive tanning them and then they were making them into boots in Portugal. So it's kind of like a, is an ad, admirable um, pursuit. Uh, I thought they I looked good. Really I think cool. that this sort of the reception was a little bit mixed, but, but they were, I mean, they were, they were doing, they were doing it the right way. It was just, it's hard, you know, with the, with that raw material, like we would get these bison hides in and we're just be like, oof. These are it's like this guy was a like a longshoreman and like like was out in the sun all day and like fell off the boat a couple of times. Like they were just like they were really rough. Like they just like they were just like beat up and yeah, scarred. Not, up and, it's yeah. funny if you're into obviously kudu, but even like kangaroo and other wild animals, people have learned to expect uh, some some scratches and some messed up stuff on it. But I feel like bison is. I mean, obviously, it's not the second most popular. They're like, you know, obviously, obviously like, you know, lambskin or whatever is more popular. Uh, but I feel like it's like the most popular weird leather. Like, it's 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 so popular that not enough people who buy it would like be expecting like scratches and stuff. Like, if you got kudu that had like a, a that you described the way you just did that it was so beat up or whatever, the kind of person who's going to buy kudu boots isn't going to be that bothered by it, right? As long as you just give them an asterisk on the order, like, just keep in mind. But yeah, bison, I can see. I can see that being tough because it's probably, yeah, the person buying it is a good chance it's their first funny, their first wild animal leather, I, I should say, right? And uh, it'd be easy for them to want to want to send it back. Yeah, and and like anything else, like with the, uh, some people in that do business are a little slippery, like to like with veg tanning, like not everything that that people are calling like pure veg is necessarily pure veg all the time. Like there's a lot of stuff that's been re veg retan that people are saying is pure veg. But anyway, that's, that's not that, the point that I'm making is that I think there's a, there's a percentage of the stuff out there that's marketed as bison. That's just uh, like regular steer hide that's been printed to look like bison, mm -hmm. which is, you know, from a performance standpoint, fine. But if you've been looking at steer hide that's just been like texture to look like bison for a long time, and you get something that's actually bison, you're going to be very alarmed. Very, you're going to be. I do not. I do not understand how there are so many companies that they'll they'll, they'll sell leather and, and they'll call it like chamois, even like chamois, like that. That's like a little goat antelope from Europe, and yet you, any any chamois boot you see out there is uh no, it's just like a, a specially finished cowhide and the same happens with bison a lot of the time and even other animals we'll just give it just give it a you, you I mean, just i double. don't know these terms are ever controlled like that's you, like the you the, unknowingly the double called out nick and i love it because he has a leather <laughs> product called chamois and he has a and leather kudu. product called kudu <laughs> what an idiot i i neither of which are goats I, did, I, did, I didn't know that but i thought we could talk more <laughs> generally and not have to because <laughs> i think other people do it too right <laughs> yeah, well, the sh the, sh the chamois thing is a little bit. It's a little different because it's like there there's an actual like an oil tan. It's like a pure oil tanage, which was like gives you like a like a rag like leather, which is called a chamois. But I don't know. I I don't know the etymology of that. But yeah, but the the kudu our kudu name is unforgivable. I have no I have no defense <laughs> there. It's not. <laughs> That's it was just like there was a time where it was it was fashionable to name things that way, and we did, and now it's. It's been, I'm trying to get. Um, years, so. I've spent over a year trying to get some wild boar leather boots made, uh, like a collaboration with Caswell, uh, and I knew going into it that it was a famously hard leather to work with, but I did not anticipate it was going to take. It's been it's been over a year that we've been sending emails trying mm. to get this wild boar leather made, and like you know, out of one day a company will like agree to do it, and then they'll get the hides and they'll try it out, and they'll be like. Screw this. This is <laughs> this lot of stuff. It's so funny. I got the idea from Oak Street. Uh, and I, we were talking about doing a collab as well. And they they just they just stopped doing the wild boar. And I was like, bring that back and we'll make it a collaboration. And they're like, we, we're never working with that leather again. You, you cannot, we will not do a wild boar leather. <laughs> and Caswell was foolish enough to say yes. And 
I don't know. Today he said he thought he found like a new kind of tannage that some place in Portugal will be okay with working with it, but he has said that fifty other times, and eventually the company's just saying fuck wild boar. I don't know. But I think I've got such a good angle for it because wild boar. Uh, they're not indigenous to America and they're so bad for the environment and like everywhere there's wild boar, the top soil is all messed up and the biodiversity is low and like, you know, they attack like dogs and stuff. And there's like a hundred different reasons why wild boar is a horrible thing. And I really, I just, I really want this boot to be made so I can market it. Like do your patriotic duty, <laughs> like what wild boar are the strongest country with the added irony of an immigrant saying it. But I'll be like, you have to help fight this scourge by buying these boots. Wear the skin of one of your fallen enemies. Uh, I think, I think it'd be really funny. Such a but uh... wild boar are horrible, and one of the ways they're horrible is that they're really hard to make boots out of. Like they're always they're just <laughs> screwing us at every turn. These animals. It's a <laughs> a, a, a a problem that's not uniquely American, but which we which as foolish Americans have like a uniquely or a uh, maybe stereotypical like American solution to, which is like to get into a helicopter and like mow them down, which is just so ridiculous. But yeah, no, they're not, they're not good for the environment. Yeah. I don't tan, I mean, tanning like all of the, like anything like that's like guilt -free related is. is, is not, it requires us. It's like a different kind of approach to tanning because the skins have more like grease in them. Mm. Um, and I don't know if that's the case with, with wild boar being like, if they're wild, they're leaner maybe, but but yeah, they seem like they're small and they're angry and they are not nice to they get, anybody. They get big though. They like mutate once they leave the pen. Uh, once they get out of half, of, I think I think all of them or most of them are just escaped from farms. Yeah, it's the same animal. And like yeah, within they, like yeah. three generations, they just become these like Frankenstein things, these huge tusks. Like they just they they mutate. It's like terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I've heard I've heard someone talk about that. It's exactly the same. Like within a couple of weeks, they start to grow like longer hair and like tusks. And, mm. Yeah, they just like turn into yeah, so weird. You're, you're talking about guilt free leather. Yeah, I would actually that's like say, a guilt free leather. But, I mean, I, I like see your leather. point, and you're kind of like <laughs> pretty good point. But you know, like most steer hide leather you can get is in my mind pretty guilt free because like somebody's got to use that hide. You're gonna people are eating the meat, so I know. But it's a pretty easy counter argument, isn't it? Like I'm familiar with it. It's like going no, no, no. Like it's it's no one raises a cow for the skin, it's a byproduct. And it's like, yeah, but you don't, the tanneries don't get that hide for free. You right. Know? They, 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 they pay for the hides that gets factored into the cost of like raising the cow. Like, no, it, that's it's that's part of the cow's value is the hide. Like, nah, it, it's a bit, it's a bit slippery. It's slippery, you know? yeah, it, I mean, it is. I mean, there's, I mean, they, there's profit there on the, on that part of it, but, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's like such a small amount compared to the rest of the, the rest of what they're doing but but yeah yeah and like yeah. I, I can i can appreciate the argument i i just think uh uh you know you're still being part of the part of the meat industry which oh definitely know, like, no i, I we've talked about this that's a terrible horrible painful thing and I've, whereas I've, with the wild boar like that's yeah. just there are, there are pests that are just killing all the local animals and stuff yeah. it's just, I've thought about it a lot. I've thought about it a lot. Like art, because you know, people sometimes ask, "Well, like, what are you going to do if people stop eating meat?" It's like, "Well, we, I guess we'll go out of business." I don't know. I mean, it's like mm. <laughs> that's what we like. We're reliant upon. I mean, that's why we're in Chicago is because that's like the, the stockyards were there. We're in the middle of the United States. Like all the animals are coming to the center of the country to then go back out to other parts of the country. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, no. It's I mean, it's one of those things where it's like it's not a it's not a very it's not a very pretty picture if like you really dig into it but i'm also not sure like what this what the other solution is at least at the moment so yeah it's kind i of do a, know what you mean because yeah if you yeah. just stop buying the hives yeah they would just toss them out and they'd rot on the ground anyway like i well, I, yeah. I get i get it even one step further back like even if you stopped if if we said okay we're gonna everything's gonna be grass-fed and then we're not you know everything's gonna be everything's gonna be grazed and i mean i don't know you just like they're just won't they're just beef would then be you know three hundred dollars a pound and no one would be able to eat it but um maybe that's maybe that's the right thing i don't know i don't know it's it's tricky it's a tricky uh, yeah it's wicked i was a vegetarian for like five years and uh uh i'm not now but i still sometimes look at all these animal hides and i'm like one day i'll be all vegan like one one day when i'm done with stridewise whatever that looks like i'll just i heard I'll that uh, florida's trying to ban and... uh 
beyond or like artificial meat. And they're just like yeah, I was hearing about that that as well. What's what's really That's funny ridiculous. about it? It's like the opposite is, is, of what we're talking about. <laughs> like no, kill more animals. But it's such like an election. It's a really funny election thing because uh, it's the cultivated meat, right? So it's not impossible meat or beyond meat or whatever. It's the one where you can grow it. Oh, from I a see. Okay. Lab. Or That's what they've been talking about. And right now, there's a bunch of po- it's in a bunch of states. Uh, politicians are uh, saying we're going to ban this meat. It's a weird. It's a Franken meat. Uh, and also, it's not nice to the uh, proud American farmers whose votes we want, and so on and so on and so on. That's uh, most of but it. The funny thing is, in none of these states, in nowhere in the country right now, can you buy it anyway? Like, there's, there, there's, there is no competition from these. Like, even at its height, there were like two or three restaurants in the entire country that were selling it, and they were selling it at a loss just to get the word out, and they're not selling it anymore. And so, it's a completely manufactured thing because it's election year and they want farmers to feel happy with their representatives and go out and yep. vote oh i see it's all just... there's no there's no actual encroaching competition yeah, from it they're just sort of like it's a fun thing to talk about <laughs> and the, and their answer to that would be yeah but this legislation is going to make sure in the future once the cost comes down for it they can't come in you know that's that's the kind of argument uh i would love to eat cultured meat i think that'd be cool i only really eat uh, the only meat I really eat as part of my daily daily diet or whatever is, is ground beef anyway. So mm. I respect, I understand that they'll say like cultured meat. I think that they're saying it, it's, 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 it can't replicate like a steak yet, like that texture or whatever else, but like ground meat, it's totally fine. No, that's fine. That's, I just eat ground meat and it's coming. And it'll be a thing. I hope so. I, yeah, cool. no, it'll be a thing. If it's cheaper and tastes better, I'd do it. Why not? It's yeah. It's gotta be good. I remember the first time it came out because the technology is always evolving and that the first journalist who ate it that then figured out a way to grow the meat but not the fat and so she was like mm. like a hundred percent lean meat it's terrible but like i thought you were gonna people say forget that like meat doesn't taste good fat tastes good i feel like i'm often having these conversations as well uh as an australian about uh kangaroo leather you know, as, as far as like discussions about ethical leather, because that one, generally, we don't farm kangaroos and the ones that get shot in Australia are, are pests. And that's obviously a subjective term, I suppose, you know, depending on who you ask. But like, there are so many of them is they're not endangered. There's there's like two or three times more kangaroos and people in, in Australia. And it's like, if they don't get shot uh, in the in the springtime, in summer, they're there's just dying of heat and stuff and drought. There's just like corpses all over the place because there's, oh there's too many of them. And they just like die. So it's like we'll shoot them and then sell the hide and sell the meat. But there are arguments. There was a dietary subculture for a while called kangatarianism where they're like the only meat I'm eating is kangaroo because that's the most ethical meat. That is. Wow. <laughs> and uh, and with, when it comes to kangaroo, like, yeah, like it's, I mean, it's really cool and it's really tough and it's really it's really pretty um these these my my grandson ottawa's and they're my only split toe boots i'm obsessed with them um but in my in my video i did on these i spent like i think more than half of the video just like breaking down the different ethical arguments about how kangaroo leather is made and i wasn't Mm. talking about the style at all i was like i just want to talk about kangaroo leather let's let's have a discussion about it which uh, sounds like and then banned in california as well there was a company I, i can't say who but there was a company uh who we were talking about doing a collaboration, but the the factory was in a state that had banned kangaroo leather, and I, I, I wanted to do a kangaroo leather boot, and like we can't do it, we can't get it into the state. Really, oh, California banned it. California is very against it. It was a bipartisan thing. There's mm-hmm. a really good article, and I and I discussed it in in my video on it. Uh, I think it was in the Washington Post, and it was called like the you new. Know, kangaroos aren't shoes campaign lands with thud in the outback it was it, that was like about the, the title of it because they got it in their heads these congressmen and again it was bipartisan it was both sides of the aisle they were like this is messed up we shouldn't be having kangaroo on our feet these those poor beautiful animals you know we just had this thing where if an animal is famous and adorable mm-hmm. it must yeah. be endangered you know what i mean like that because that is the case Pretty much 100% of the time with pandas and tigers and every famous animal. It's not the case with all the kangaroos. They're not endangered. And we already talked about why we should be using their hides because otherwise they're going to be rotting on the ground. But they, and so there was all these great interviews with the guys in the outback and uh, being like, I don't know what they're smoking over in America. Those guys are, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how they got this idea. But California, you can't, 
you kind of kangaroo. I mean, they still sell it because kangaroo is like a really common leather on soccer cleats. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think even Adidas, like or, or Puma, it was one of the big ones. Uh, so pretty much every store that sells soccer shoes is is violating it. But still, you know, especially if you want to make it, like import the leather in. Like now, nah, there's there's regulatory bodies uh, saying so, you know, you're not you're not getting that in here. Oh, I didn't know that. It's evil, evil hides. Yeah. Sounds like we need to start a wild boar kangaroo like uh, <laughs> python tannery. We should start it in Florida. Yeah, we'll just call it bad leather. That'll be the name of the company. And it'll be like animals you should be glad to kill. Yeah. You should be happy about this. <laughs> all of these. That's our marketing. Our marketing thing is going to be all of these animals deserve to die. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> That is so funny. That's and we'll terrible. have like we'll have like rat leather as uh as, yeah. as like the, we'll sell like little pouches, little wallets of rat leather. It's like we, from New York's finest. This this That's is all funny. from like that, that mouse is caught in their apartments. Just everything I did like in my first like year or two. Uh I'll be extra kind of it. I'll just say my first year of making content and stuff. Like I got so much stuff wrong. And I was, I'm, I'm in like a, a slow phase of like redoing a lot of my older videos. Like, you know, like my first video I ever did was Red Wing Iron Ranger review, of course. So it's like, I, I did a, a new updated version of that with like, I'm better at contextualizing things and everything. But like that first year, I just thought it was like, Veg 10 is good for the environment, Chrome 10 bad for the environment. Look at these studies that show chromium-6 in the waterways. Look at these skin lesions on these uh, tannery workers in Kanpur. Look at these like these these rates of like uh, birth defects and all this kind of stuff. I just thought, I didn't know chrome tanning could be okay. For like too long, I got away <laughs> with saying that. I didn't get corrected. That doesn't mean that it well, was you weren't, else that, to correct That me. didn't sound like incorrect information, but it was like the tiniest part of the story, you know? I think that's, that's yeah. What, what we come what across I, what every I, day here. But what I said <laughs> yeah. is like it, it it is bad. Not that it can be really bad if it's not properly managed and if it's at a badly regulated tannery and if the chromium six isn't isn't checked out. Like when I heard that Corwin does chrome tanning, I was like, oh my god! Like, <laughs> does, does everyone in does everyone in Chicago have like these like horrible lesions or whatever? I was like, how do they get away with this? I was I was like looking at pollution uh, things online. I was like, what's their output? Like, I. Uh, I was like, oh, it betrayed me. Like, I really. <laughs> it's been 120 years too okay. in the city here. And there were more than just Horwin doing chrome tanning. You'd think you would see some side effect after that long. Right. I was, yeah. uh, I w- I, one thing I'm very grateful for. I mean, I knew that chrome tanning wasn't the uh, the worst thing in the world before I went down there. But uh, La Farc Tannery down in uh, in, in Leon in Mexico, they, they flew me down there uh, to take part in some like workshop thing they were doing, you know, I, ma- I made some boot leather or I finished it rather, uh, made some videos stuff. Anyway, it was super fun and it was really cool for them to, to bring me out there. And uh, I did a video on their sustainability practices and stuff. And uh, yeah, just there's like all these different ways they just make sure the Chrome 6 doesn't go anywhere and they, yep. they're able to compress all of their waste down into like this like one little brick that they're yep. then able to- There is no Chrome 6 of though. In a way that just- That's yeah, the thing, there is no yeah. Chrome 6 ever, unless you- Put I, I'm not I'm not the guy to say this because I'm not I don't understand it but it's been explained. Did to I me. say Chrome Six was in the brick or did I say waste was in the brick? Did I say Chrome Six? You said there is no Chrome Six in any tannery that you've ever been in or have used the product from. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but it, it, the tannery uses a stable version of Chrome, which is Chrome Three. Is that right, Nick? Yep. And yeah. Chrome, Chrome, Chrome Six, six is, is the carcinogen, right? Yeah. You, you can create Chrome 6, but it has to be under incredible temperature and pressure. It's or like, pH. Or there's, there's other ways to do it, too. But, I mean, if it's, it's like it's, you've done something really wrong. And also, I think that it's, it's such a... I mean, it's a, it's a very complicated, like, scientific conversation to, like, really dig into what the, what the, like, the potential issues are there. But, but yeah, I mean, it's, I think that... I think that it's manufacturing. I mean, any kind of manufacturing has an impact. Uh, and no, it doesn't matter if it's veg tanning or crump tanning or if you're making, I don't care, jeans or anything. I mean, there's, you're still using water and electricity and like people and like there's always this. So I think that the, the, the thing is to, to make sure that you're treating all of the inputs and the outputs the right way, right being in quotes. Um, and then making something that's going that someone making something that someone actually wants that's going to last for a long time. And I think that I think that that's the best way to get out from under from you know from the from the like the from the impact conversation. But yeah, I mean, I think the the Chrome the Chrome 
is bad, conversation is one is like where everybody starts their leather journey because that's because mm. the, 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 everyone's seen Aaron Brockovich and they've heard the stories. But <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's what, what, are, what are other things like you'll you'll strongly believe in like your first year of caring about boots and that that you'll find out later is uh, is totally wrong. I must have had I must have had so many. Even oh, like, like, like that Chrome XL is full green. It's not corrected. Like it's like, oh, it's corrected a little bit. Or, or Goodyear Weld is the only isn't. is the only thing that's any good. Is the what is Goodyear Weld? If it's not Goodyear Weld, it's not worth yes. having. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I used to say. Actually, I did a video on this. It was like I got to like I think I got to like seventeen things I got wrong, and then I was like, well, I got to end this video. But it was like here's a bunch of stuff that I got wrong in my in my early years, uh, and I think that the Chrome tanning was one of them. Uh, I also would talk a lot about, I mean, this isn't about leather, I suppose, but like how Blake stitches are inferior and really hard to get resold. It's, and like now I, I love Blake stitches. Leather I watched soles that video today. suck Lakers. and are pointless. And now I, now I love leather soles, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I watched that stuff. video today, actually, ahead of this. I, I, like, <laughs> I like that you did that. I like that, that you went through and you're like, I, I mean, these are things that I've learned. I think that that's, I, I think that there are plenty of people that, that wouldn't, that wouldn't do that. They just, they would just sort of, continue on with their new knowledge and just pretend that they'd always had that opinion. That, yeah, that's always in that spot. That's yeah. the that's that's the annoying thing about it being, you know, media production is you're always you you're putting out content as you're getting better. <laughs> as you're yeah. learning things. That old that old stuff is still there. One day I'll just delete it all. Uh all the, I think the the ones where I say bad things. That's you know I probably should man. I should I should uh get like transcripts of all those old videos. And just because you can edit stuff after it's on YouTube, and maybe I'll just like cut some stuff out or something. I don't know. Because I see stitch down construction. I think it's 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 good to have a time capsule. Not very strong, and blah blah blah. But part of what you're selling though is expertise and knowledge, and I like that you're you know committed to doing it the right way. Because Nick Horwin and I know enough about these things that we can watch a video and pretty quickly tell if somebody just looked up a Wikipedia article or like actually knows what's up. You know, I haven't. I guess I haven't watched those old videos recently. But <laughs> when I when I watch this stuff, man, I I feel I would feel confident telling people like, listen to this guy. Like, and, and in fact, it's more than. So you do a great job, but it's more than that too. Is like I'm constantly surprised at people in the Reddit uh, Goodyear Goodyear Walt uh, subreddit, as well as in the Stitch Down Discord. There's pretty. <laughs> I honestly have no idea how they figured out the stuff they know because it's like really down the rabbit hole type of information. But, you know, if you, I would say to anybody listening that wants to ask a question, I bet put it in the Strideways comment section. You probably get a good answer or go to those other two places and you'll get some good answers. And if people are putting nonsense answers, other people call them out, which is, so there, there's, we're starting to get to the point where this information's propagated enough times where people are are calling out the, the nonsense. But I suppose the danger, like at the top, we talked about Chrome Excel being great. Like, I think it's great. That's super subjective. I think that has been propagated a few times now too, where it's like, that's sort of just everybody's mantra. So like, again, like I like it, but like, I because I also have my own, like I'm able to separate myself from from a scene. Um, mm-hmm. where yeah, like, that's, a, that's a key, that's a really important, trait to have i mean you know everywhere in life anywhere in life to, to understand the subjectivity of your own opinions right? but i also think i like raw denim and that's pretty much all i wear but i kind of don't know why other than i like how it wears in you know <laughs> like it's like i don't know anything about it i just go like i like the fade's pretty sweet but i don't i don't go down <laughs> that rabbit hole right so for me it can get very superficial too I'm just like what does that look like all right cool and actually yeah. that was my thing i always got wrong was fit like i would just look at the shoes like for example, Nick and I were talking about the original Roy boot that Context did with Alden. It must have been 12 years ago, maybe more. And how that was the first boot that like everybody felt in love with, including me. And I have those now. But there, there's this beautiful image of these boots really well photographed. And you know the luster was perfect and the lighting was right and the color was great. And it's like, those look beautiful. I want that and... I would just whatever looked great in an image, I would just buy it, and they would never fit, and I would sort of force it to fit. And now I'm sort of the opposite of that, as I, I kind of care less about how it looks, and I just want it to feel good. You know, 
It's funny. I thought we were getting. I thought the the conclusion of that was going to be like it's okay to want something just because it's pretty. Oh, see, to th justify. Th oh, that too. I think that's. I I don't. I that's something that guys have a hard time saying. That's a philosophical thing, though, because like you'll notice behind. I guess I have guitars. That honestly, okay, so that's a good one. Like I have guitars, but all of these have a function that I sp specifically require from each of them. So I, I think that's a philosophy that of Phil that like. Phil is a very pragmatic guy that like has to have a thing for its purpose. But I, I, Dale, who I love, has a wall of boots behind him. Who knows if he wears them all or I'm sure he's worn them once. But like, I think there's also a, a bit of joy that one can get from just looking at a collection of beautiful things. So I get that too. It's just like dif difference of philosophy, I suppose. So I don't think it's wrong. It's just not for me. Yeah, I mean, I but I also think that I'm not putting you in this category necessarily, although you might be. Do it. I think there's a, I think there's a lot of guys. I'm not saying you're in it. I think there's a, there's a, there's a lot of guys who, the reason they're into their uh, their boots or or their jackets or then the, the, the train sets or whatever, you know, the, any any hobby. Like there's there's a lot of guys. The real reason they like it is because it's aesthetically appealing to them, but they don't feel like they're allowed to say that mm. to the point that they won't even acknowledge it to themselves. You know, like they'll just. Well, it's got to be part it just, of it, it, right? It, that's too. That's too girly. Like a bit. Like a really good example. Of this is watches, like wristwatches. Like I and I. I don't mean to be dismissive of uh, of a love of watches because I do. I understand and respect that there's like there's an engineering element to that. It's like a boys and their toys. The the way they're gearheads. Like I don't understand anything about cars, but I respect the guys who are into it. I get it. Yeah, there's a lot of work in engineering and fine tuning and skill that goes into making them. That said. A lot of guys, when you listen to them talk about their watches, like a lot of it is like, it's this is jewelry. This is something pretty. You really like the proportions and you think it's nice. And this is the only place that guys are allowed to say, allowed to like something for how pretty it is, is their watch. Because when they're allowed to do jewelry, you don't do earrings. W women have earrings, they got necklaces, they got, they got, they got bracelets, they've got their, their, their shoes, they've got all their clothes, like all that stuff. Women are allowed to talk about the aesthetics of it as much as they want. Guys, if there's one thing he's allowed to say he likes the aesthetics of, it's, it's a watch. That's You're the, right. That's the only, I really think that's like the only socially acceptable thing. Now, we're in spaces where we can feel comfortable saying, I like the way this, this boot looks, this leather looks really nice, da da da, da. But broadly, you know, society-wide, uh, men men are uncomfortable saying, I like this I like this because it looks nice. You, you could get away with it with watches, though. After Nick H and I recorded our last episode, we we had an off camera conversation that reminds me of this, which is there's this new trend in car color, which people call like putty gray. It's essentially a gray color on a car, but without any metal flake in the paint. So it has this. It's a flat gray. Yeah. It has this. What did you call? It? Well, it has a term, Nick. It's just a flat. It's just like flat gray. But it had like a a word that was oh that, like is it that the, gray. Audi calls it Nardo gray. Nardo that's like, gray. That's, the, that's their color for it, yeah. Which is a great name, right? <laughs> it's uh, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about having this lack of metal flake in it is it gives it this lack of, of um, dimension to the finish. And you'll, mm. you'll, you might notice these cars driving around. And the, the reason that I, 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 I didn't... This is not an original thought, but it makes sense. I was watching a YouTube guy talk about this color and the thesis is that it's just different enough. So it, it's, I want a car, but I don't want to be too crazy, you know, neon yellow, and I don't want to be too boring black. So I need something that's like just cool enough. <laughs> I think a lot of the, a lot of the stuff I like is that. It's like stealth, like, you got to know what it is to think it's cool kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. I fall into that trap a bit where it's like, oh, that guy's wearing fiber or, or whatever. That base is a thing wall. I don't know. Like there's like niche things that only certain people in a scene know. And it's a social, it, I think it could be a social signal of like, oh, I know what's up with that guy, right? All this stuff is sort of fashion menswear, whatever, in that when you see someone, you can like, you can like notice like, oh, okay, he knows what he's doing with that blazer. He I can trust him with these with other that. things, like my taxes. <laughs> Not that so much. Just like a second, you'll you'll risk, you'll notice. Oh, he's got Aldens. All right, so he he knows a thing or two about about this or that. Oh, that's a you know whatever Omega Seamaster 
all right he he he's in the no you know he's he's figured some stuff out he's he's not just playing around you know this guy i think that's how guys <laughs> i think that's how guys do it i don't i think women do it the same way with the brands as well but i think that the i don't know maybe everybody's different right but i think there's also just a lot of dudes and non-dudes that just want a bunch of stuff <laughs> you know like it's Definitely. not it's not about having like one of the coolest ones it's about having like just a huge range you know yeah yeah for sure that's what's so, so funny about the whole heritage uh fashion slash apparel scene is uh the draw for a lot of guys like there's a bunch of stuff that's cool about it like it's 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 timeless it's not seasonal it's uh it's simple you know it's not it's not it's not usually not very gaudy um it's 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 durable uh whether we're talking about boots or you know a canvas jacket or nice thick denim or whatever uh but for a lot of guys and this this sort of keys into what i was saying earlier guys are not allowed to like aesthetics or fashion or stuff like that so they'll tell themselves these stories like no no i need boots because so i can handle the rain it's like no no i'll get the salvage denim it's it's 18 ounces it'll last longer than other ones it's actually a good investment and they'll they'll just keep on going these areas because they're not allowed to say it's i just i like the way it looks and it's it, i like i like it it's yeah pretty, confirmation it's, bias it's real and what's really funny is that they then they'll get into it as a hobby or whatever if they also call it that or a collective and this is just a tiny amount of the, the boots <laughs> that i have but they'll get so many they'll just if you really like something you'll get more of them and very quickly the you can't say with a straight face, I own this because it's durable and will last through many resoles because you will never wear it enough to, to need a resole. Like, oh, I got the 20 ounce uh, Ship John jacket. I didn't want 12 ounce canvas. I really wanted 20 ounce because it's more durable. It's like you would not have worn through 12 ounces though. Like it's, you know. <laughs> I love that you're saying that because that, that, that was the question I was asking in one of those past episodes when I was talking about the durability of uppers and like people make all this big stink about all of it. And it's just like, I, I never see people wear through them unless yeah i guess i'm just not hanging around actual workers like people that do real work I'm just hanging around a bunch of babies yeah it's yeah it is it is it is very interesting and it's like i think also as you know boys if if we're told that this thing is tougher than that thing we're like ah cool like even if practically that it's not going to make any effect on our lives or how we use it or how long Maybe it that's what it is that's cost a, us to repair good insight it's, yeah, we like tough, strong things. Well, I think if you're <laughs> being in like the being in like the style space versus like the fashion space, which I think is where we all are, like that there's, it, like I think you were saying earlier, like it's less you're less risky, and like so you want so things so things that have utility tend to be things that stick around longer and are less. I mean, if it's good, if it's going to last longer, then it's going to be like a little bit more maybe stylish and less fashiony. Which is sort of where you start to fall into like yeah. boots and watches. But you watches can pretend and, that that was yeah. never part of the appeal for you. Yeah. Like you know, in in five years you can have these like these sick fades on your jeans and this great patina on your leather, and you can just act like it was all an accident when actually yeah. that was the whole point. The yeah. Reason you got it. So, of course, I say that, and I'm wearing clear glasses right now, so I'm fully aware <laughs> of the irony in that statement. Those are really cool in like 2014. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I remember, <laughs> I remember everyone in my office had them in 2014. I was actually thinking the other day, I haven't seen people in clear glasses yeah. for a while. <laughs> these, I got these in 20, uh, 2013. I was way ahead of the curve. <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> anyway, I think it's good to like things because they're durable and stuff. I think I just think guys need to give themselves permission to like something for the way it looks as well because they usually won't and yeah. then they'll tie themselves in no, knots right. and they'll, the whole thing will fall apart after a few questions. And I think... I feel like our main purpose sometimes is to have a uh, have a set of ideas that won't fall apart under basic questioning, whether that's our religion or our relationship or our job or all that kind of stuff. You know, you should be able to interrogate why you're doing stuff at any given time. And the answer is the answer is because I like it is like a totally acceptable yeah. answer. Oftentimes, yeah. Like, yeah as long like, as you well, don't tie that to like an ultimate objective truth, which yeah. is as as relevant to discussions about uh, about the subjectivity of religion as it is to the objectivity of a boot's toughness. You know, it's it's like, because you could say, stitch down is more laborious to make and therefore I, or hand sewing stitch down and therefore I, I enjoy this more than these Goodyear welted boots and so on and so on. And this is an embodiment of skill and so on and so on. And that's, 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 that's fine. I, I, I get people who like stuff because of that. But also, you know, I like this quote of it. It's shiny. I like this. Shininess. Yeah. To me, I'm more about the like <laughs> colors and the leathers. Like, 
I want to experience all the different materials that the world has to offer. I think I think materials are really fun, especially leather. I, and that's the thing for me. I run into the problem where I don't get to wear all my stuff, and that's like the only reason I wanted it because I wanted to see how it <laughs> yeah. how it wore in. <laughs> so that's the trap I fall into. I like uh, I like and don't like. I have I have an excuse to have so many of these things because you know it's my it's my job and whatever, and I get to make the content and everything else. Um, so yeah, it's a bit more defensible that I've got so many of them, but it doesn't it doesn't that doesn't help that much when I just like I just I don't have enough legs to wear all the shoes I want to wear. I went to my storage locker in Brooklyn on the weekend because I had to get some sneakers out for for a video I'm doing, uh, and. Yeah, God, I had my my trickers were in there. This Division Road collab with trickers, this gorgeous Acorn Antique leather, the broguing, and I've just I just went ham on a bunch of tweed sports jackets. I just got obsessed with them, and I bought a whole bunch of them. And I'm like, oh, this this brogued trickers shoe would be so good with like my that that uh that that tan sports jacket I've got. But I've already got those olden brogues, and I don't know, you just feel kind of dumb when you have own great stuff that you can't you can't wear all the time. Well, see, you actually maybe made... there's a life lesson in there. You know, you can't do everything. Well, that's a really good segue for me. This is super selfish. So in my effort to buy things that I thought were cool and wear them for a long time, I think I'm stuck in a boot world of roughly a decade ago because that's when I I think that this happens to a lot of guys. They'll hop into a scene and go really hard on it. And then, you know, two years later, like, well, I I bought everything. (laughs) I have it all now. And then they don't buy anything for another 10 years. So we're, we're I, I don't know if you're <laughs> we kind of talking about asking this earlier and you were reluctant to say it, but I was more focused earlier in my past on like Alden, Allen Edmonds, the Pacific Northwest White Spoots type of stuff. Or do you think I should consider looking uh, today in 20, 2024? Like, should I pick up something from everywhere again? <laughs> Oh, look, I reckon if you don't have an Indonesian boot, get an Indonesian boot. That's number one. That's, yeah. Well, I, what I mean is if you've, if you've already rounded the bases, if you've already done, you know, you've explored Alden and Alan Edmonds and Red Wing and Pacific Northwest stuff. Yeah, i definitely say get some Indonesian boots. Uh, that's fun and cool. And you can make them as normal as you want. You can just get a Chromex Health Service boot if you want, and you can just enjoy the fact that it was like hand welted, which is cool. How do you do like uh, stock... Or- do they do stock items there and sizing and all? like how is that whole really process some si- like Sigara has I don't know much about uh F- Fortuna and there are a couple of like bigger brands that uh actually haven't haven't looked into much but uh Sigara C- has like a few ready to go things on their shelves just from returns or whatever um but normally you have to wait for it to get made which does take a few months there are newer brands um that are hungrier uh Fortis uh, is one Jack Rabbits is another these are these are brands. They'll do it. They'll they'll do it in maybe under a month. Uh, but you don't get like the the name. Of How tough is sizing? The or junket or whatever. It's all right. I mean, they 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 do European sizing, you know. Um, but I would just you just tell them this is what my size is in 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 whatever shoes you have that are European sizing, and then measure your feet as well, uh, just to make just to make sure. And that's. But- that's Phil, you want me. more boots or you want just something different? I mean, I do love I boots. <laughs> Honestly, I, I don't have any laced to toe stuff. It would be cool to get something like that. Something. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, go to, go to, I mean, Sigara, their monkey boot is like their, their big seller. So, I mean, that was, I did, I did a video on it because I, I was lucky when I was there. They happened to have, uh, it was a half size too big, but it was okay. It, and it was, it was the, the Sigara, the Chord Master is what it's called. So it was their monkey boot in natural Mariam veg tan horse butt leather with a double at the midsole it was just everything indonesian like all the indonesian things all in one <laughs> in one boot so yeah if you you don't have a monkey boot all right maybe get an, okay. get an indonesian monkey boot Sagara is it like they're the monkey boot they're the indonesian monkey boot but you know all those guys they'll, they'll make a monkey boot all right i think you should get some some dress shoes from the uk too i think you should get those at the same time yeah i mean those loke is it loke or loki uh, I think it's Loke. I think that Loke think stuff Loke. is really, really cool looking. I know They're not too expensive either. That's like the lower end of British stuff, you know? They kind of have that like um, Dutch clog sort of vibe that I, I like. It's like the straight toe. Uh, it's very like very formed 
appearing? I've done so little. I, I was going to... <laughs> I don't know if I just say this. I was I was going to day night the company that makes the souls. Uh, we were we were talking about uh, going out there and doing some videos of their factory and stuff. And they were like, if you come out, like you know, we're just going to get all these factories to like because I I already done like trickers and a couple other people. But he was like, we're going to do Crockett and Jones. We're yeah. going to do look. We're going to do church. You're like, we're going to we'll get you to all of them, all these British ones. Because I haven't done a ton of British ones. I've done trickers as, as far as like boosts that I've worn and made content about. Um, I did trickers. I probably should do Crockett Endurance. But for all the people asking me all the time, you know, can you do your British boots? Can you do more stuff on British boots? Like, uh, as an internet content dude, I kind of usually have to do stuff based on the search volume. And, like, just the search volume is not all that high relative really? to American. Relative to I think American it should volume. be higher. It's still, I mean, if, that, if that helps push the hiring. push put a little bit. Yeah. Because I, I, Crockett. I, I don't, Crockett and Jones and, like, I know Carmita has some traction and uh, I guess I don't, I don't understand why I don't see more of that stuff like Edward Green. I know that's, but they're, they're small and quite expensive, but I don't know, it just seems like. Of, of British stuff, like, uh, like, yeah, I got, I got someone writing Edward Green Galway review for me, that kind of stuff. Like yeah. I'll, when it's like something I'm interested in, but I can't justify the business expense of producing a, a movie about it. Uh, I'll get someone to write something for the site and it'll pop up. So I'm pretty sure if you look up, actually, I don't know, Google's crazy at the moment, but for a while, anyway, uh, Edward Green boot review, I was number one for that. But yeah, anyway, I'd like to get more into into into, into British stuff, I guess. I, I do want to do Lurk, um, and I, I do need to do Crockett and Jones. Crockett and Jones is worth it. Especially like I put James Bond's shoes in the title and that. I think, yeah, I think they're bit, pretty big, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe not on YouTube search volumes. Yeah. Well, it's the kind of it's like you know you have to decide either do something that's a common search term like Nubuck versus Suede, su surprisingly very highly searched, hmm. or do something that's not a highly searched term but is like clicky and interesting, like James Bond shoes. Can it survive a grenade explosion? <laughs> <laughs> Forty minutes that's, later, that's the, the digital no. content game. And I for a long time it was just I was, it was only search, just do search. This is the only way to build like reliable income. But like now I'm at a point where like I can I can play around a little bit more uh, and do some stuff that might not have been searched so much. Yeah. How do you how do you feel about that? Because we had uh, Weston on from Rose Anvil and and he I like that he's a, unapologetic about it. He's like, look, I'm, it's the game. You have to be kind of clickbaity and uh, I don't know. How do you how do you feel about the game? Well, it's funny. We we have we're kind of we're playing different games. He and I uh, we have different <laughs> business models. He, I mean, he's I mean, he doesn't even have a website. The thing is, what people don't a lot of people don't know that like my I, I a lot of people don't even know I have a website, uh, and that is why I'm able to do this as a job as opposed to a side hobby. Because normally, people when I meet people at events or go to a company or a factory or something, they're like, "What's your day job?" And I'm like, "This is it." And that's because I have a, a website that's really good at servicing on Google. Uh, so, like, I'm number two right now for best men's boots. And for many years, I was number one for best boots. But in mid-December, the algorithm changed, and it's very, very stressful. But if we're just pretending we're having this conversation December 14, number one for best boots, best boots under $300, best mock toe boots, you know, best, best boots under $200, how to wow. condition boots, best boot conditioners, all this kind of stuff. Because I've been in digital media you know, for a long time, I was in the fitness industry before I was doing this. And that's where I learned how to make websites to make money and stuff. Anyway, all this is a long way, winded way of saying the way the game that Roseanne is playing that I'm playing that we both have YouTube channels, but it's all, it's very, it's different. Um, and my stuff is yeah, traditionally more about what people are searching for. So I gotta, gotta mm. get that best boots, gotta get that best men's boots and the best, <laughs> best mock boots and that sort of stuff. So, I mean, I see you say it with a smile on your face. Are you are you loving it, or is it like overly stressful? So right now it's stressful because the algorithm changed in mid December, uh, which and it's a bit stressful. But then, like, but just in the last couple of days, we got back to number two for best men's boots, so I'm feeling a little bit better about it. But the the last yeah, the last two three months have been not nice. But before that, it was great. And it was really good at the start when I, I didn't have any competitors at all. And I was like, this is great. And now there's all these other websites coming at me for these terms and everything. But the first like three, four years there, I was just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just do whatever I want. <laughs> and all this extra, extra leeway. 
no, I do. I do like it though. I am very lucky because honestly, when I when I started this thing, like I would have done anything. I was just like, I've got to get out of my job. I got to not because I didn't like my job, but I was just at that age where I had to do my own thing, you know. And I knew enough about internet stuff that I could start a website. And I was just trying to figure out a, a topic for it. And uh, I had a I had a friend slash consultant work with me and help me workshop some ideas and stuff. But if he had told me the next business that he started was reviewing home security systems. And if he had told me like, that's where the, that's where the, the money is right now. That's where the search volume that's going unaddressed. I would have been like, all right, screw it. All right. I'll, I'll start a home security systems review. So I don't care. Like, I just want to have my own thing. Oh man, I don't think but, I could have uh, done that. I, I don't know. Maybe I would have just become really passionate about it. I don't know. But fortunately, he was like, you know, you're always talking about your boots. Like, you think you like <laughs> there might be something there. <laughs> and then we 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 worked that out, and that was that was lucky um, because this stuff is is uh, it's fun and and cool, and it's, it's also yeah, because there's a lot of people as well. The the more time you spend in the space, they're like going, you know, the only thing worth wearing is is thousand dollar Japanese boots and that kind of stuff. And like, I'm still like. Look, like it's it's nice, it's cool learning about like gaming and different types of canvas ribs and and that sort of stuff. Like it's cool, but you know, I still my heart is still in the three hundred ish dollar booth that just looks really nice and mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, me that's too. What I like, like I've, I've got a good balance of the appreciation of the engineering side of it and like the aesthetic part of it. Uh, maybe that's the the confidence or self awareness of enough to to be able to say like, no, I just I also just like the way they look down here, and I think. The higher up you get, the you get a, a diminishing returns. Yeah, um, depending on what you want, of course. You know, like I, I appreciate that there's a good section of the public, uh, at least the people who are listening to this, were like they want to wear something. If that, if I'm going to wear something and put it on my body, I want to be the best version of that it can be. Like almost like as a form of self respect or something. And like I, I can, I can appreciate that. You know, so I like to shit talk guys who. You know, like the QC guys who like they'll buy something with the intent of complaining. You know, they'll open the box, like a whip out the magnifying glass. Oh. Like if I see a stitch out of place, I'm gonna be so mad about this. And it has no, if it has a functional drawback, like fine. But like that, uh, a slightly misplaced stitch is not a functional thing. It's it's strictly aesthetic. But but I I I can appreciate there are some guys like I'm I'm saving up my money. I, I want it just to be the best possible version of a thing. So that's fair enough. But like for me, I'm not. I'm too. I'm not detail oriented enough for that. I'm I'm more forgiving of all these these flaws, especially since I made my own boots. I made some in in Guatemala a while ago, and I had not my I don't I had I don't think I've used a sewing machine before. My boots are just wonky stitches all over the place. I'm it's like, hard. I love them. And now, when I get boots with like flaws, uh, I love I like them. I mean, a person made it, you know. But there are a lot lot of lot of people who. They want something handmade and they want it to be perfect. And it's like, those things don't really go together. That, that combination is very expensive. You gotta go, you gotta go <laughs> yeah. like, bes like full bespoke. I mean, and then you can, and then you can be that picky, but. Right, right. And yeah, and, and yeah. in fairness, like the, the there, are, there are people who are like that. They want that love of perfection, but they only expect it in that bespoke thousand dollar Japanese sort of range. But what bugs me is when, you know, you'll get guys holding $300, $200 boots to that standard, which you see on Reddit all the time, you know, yeah, like that's, I think that's a complaining so much that it's like welt stitch. That's like the, the welt joint. That's like a little crooked and it's like, yeah. it doesn't matter. And these are $300. But to my point from earlier, I've seen probably exactly that same thread and other people will chime in and say, that's normal. Get over it. I mean, people will back, back up the, the brands and it's in an appropriate way. You know, just yeah. more like more truth is nice. Because yeah. I think people yeah, don't know yeah. don't know what's what. Yeah, it's tricky, especially when you get just getting into a hobby and you're like, all right, I want to know everything. Like, tell me what's good, tell me what's good. Okay, well, joint has to be this. Okay, the stitching has to be evenly placed here. Okay, there's like a rule of threes as to like whether the heel counter should be relative to the front of the boot. Like, there, there are these ratios out there that a lot of guys uh, talk about. Uh, and I, I like to think that most of the guys who are being real sticklers about this are just in like year one or two of it. And then down the line, you get you get like more perspective about the whole stuff and you understand what you should be able to expect at a certain price point and so on and so on. Um, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and there's also, again, guys who like boots. There's, there's like, a, there's like I don't know, maybe three or four different kinds. It's like 
the, the guys who want a, a work of art, something emblematic of high skill, and then there's the guys who need something to work in, and there's the guys who just want something that looks cool and keeps their feet dry. And you know, there's there's a bunch of different customers out there, and it's kind of funny starting a, a website that's so targeted at such a niche, uh, like boots, like easy. That's just one niche, but like now there's all these little subcategories within there, and so I gotta make sure I talk about these brands the right way, uh, which I've gotten good at doing lately. But yeah, I just started. I'm excited and nervous about this video I'm filming on Friday, uh, which is, it's, I'm trying to make it like my, I sort of think the, for the boot guy, I think the most important brand is, is, is Viberg, like just the most impactful, influential, the, the, the way it's talked about online, the, the, the way people talk about it, the way it gets exalted over other ones. Uh, it's not the most expensive boot brand in the world. Uh, but it's just the the place that it has in bootdom is is inimitable, you know. Like the this the the mixture, the balance of scale to uh, perfection, you know, <laughs> is uh, is unmatched. Anyway, so I've done one video on Viberg. It was like my, it was like month three or something. I had no idea what anything was, and it's taken this long to be like, all right, like I I think I can say. <laughs> Why? Why Viberg? <laughs> I, think I, I think I can finally. I think I can do it. What's the one can, liner like, there? Give us the preview. Oh boy, it's uh, it it. Mm, the quality control that you get. I don't. There's like. There's not much quality. Yeah. What am I saying? The best quality control for the price, I think, is probably a big part of it you know um there's more to it than that and you're putting on the spot because i I've, it's like three and a half thousand words this thing yeah, and yeah. i made so many points i think i eventually have like eight i tried to as i was writing it i was like maybe i can listify it a little bit make like eight reasons or whatever reasons why viberg is why some people pay nine hundred dollars for these boots you picked a really uh, interesting example given those two timelines or time periods of time because when you first did your video his finishing methods have changed radically since and it's, it's yeah no you're right and that's what what's what's funny about it is um yeah teacher blanco he's he's coming into town to on friday because he's he, he does some work with the iron boots uh, out of china and i have some iron boots we're going to talk about that but also like knowing we were going to be working together i was like all right I, I i want you to i always wanted to have someone else so, like interviews for the vibe because vibe is just so important and i always wanted to get like ben from stitch down i wanted to get teacher blanco in i wanted to get jake almost vintage style like i wanted to get this whole like documentary about like what like is the boot the casual boot anyway you know like it's it's especially for the for the boot nerds and i'm already realizing this video's you know i i gotta pare it down even <laughs> before te before teacher comes in it's already like 20 minutes long and i'm, I'm in trouble about it you know <laughs> but it's but I, I'm to your point. Uh, I'm really glad that he's gonna that he's willing to be interviewed and, and give his feedback. I've sent him the script and the whole thing, and he's gonna be appearing in it uh, because he 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 brought he brought that up. He was like, when in in 2016 2017, uh, the it changed considerably, and a lot of things. Are, a lot of people complain of the QC now, and it used to be like this is simply the best QC for for the price and if you if QC is your thing and, and stitch density is your thing and like perfectly uh aligned stitches is your thing and like i said that's there's those guys with the most perfect thing they can earn uh this is actually a great deal and a very good value thing because otherwise you'd be going to japan or something or or waiting six months you know as far as like how quickly you can get to them and how good they are and how good the QC is and how much they cost like that's sort of like the venn diagram where like viberg's actually kind of right there in the middle um and that I guess that was the thrust of uh, my overall argument in my what wound up being like nine different points that I made <laughs> in the script. And teacher was like, "Yeah, they're worse now, though." <laughs> oh no! So he's gonna oh, come no. and just like douse water on me in the video. Oh, but it'll be good though because he was like, he he was like, "Look, it's a good script. Uh, I'm I'm comfortable appearing in it. Like, it's not like a, a hot, you know, it's not like just saying things I could never have my name associated with." Uh, but if you want to interview me, like, this is sort of how I feel about it. But if you want, we can talk about something else or we can just instead talk about the loss or something. And I was like, no, Vibex not paying me. I'm happy to have someone in there saying Vibex sucks now. Let's, let's do it. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to have Brett 
Uh, we're going to watch that video with Brett live. And then <laughs> and what's the, uh, what's, you know, when they do the state of the union and they have like the rebuttal, we should do like a Brett for a bottle yeah. show. <laughs> I really, I really do. I've been kicking around this idea of age. I really want to do like a full, like 90 minute documentary about, I want to call it Weiberg. <laughs> <laughs> and just, just get all these people across the industry, you know, in like that, that, that room with like the black background and they're, they're talking, they're, they're, they're looking off camera and answering questions and just, um, yeah. I thought you were going to say they're taking all their voice stuff. to change their Jake voices. And you guys and, there's a voiceover and then I'll go to Canada. I was actually just in Vancouver last month and I was, it took all of my effort to not go to Vancouver Island and just bust down the door and like, show me everything. Um, that would be the kind of thing that would be the the worst business decision I could make <laughs> is make, making that documentary, the amount of time it would take relative to the number of views it would get relative to the amount of money that a YouTube view gets me. It would just be the biggest money loss I could think of, but it's just, it's Feinberg. It's like, it's just, it's it. I'm not even a big Vibeck fanboy. I don't. I don't love Vibeck, but I just know the the, you got the, respect. the impact that it has. It's just, it's just just no one talks about any boot company the way they talk about Vibeck or the volume at which they talk about Vibeck. <laughs> like it's it's important. It's just so important, you know. Interesting. Yeah, I think yeah, that, that you might want to examine that a bit. There's there having. Do you own any any of their stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at my color rates right here. There's kind of like a, for my, I only have one pair. There's some sort of like intangible thing about how just absolutely beefy it feels on. Like you, you feel mm -hmm. a little bit different in them. <laughs> there's, there's an intangible heavy, something about it. This also, this mark here, I almost cut my foot off chopping wood in Australia. My Viberg oh saved me. So for anyone who says that Vibergs are not working man boots. Yeah, you were doing real opposite. work. Cut your feet <laughs> off. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's funny that they trademark the word service boot as well. One thing about Viberg though is like, is I've got I've got two. I've got another I've got another pair over there. My older pair. This one's a little bit newer. Um, their Chrome XL doesn't have any loose green on mine. Uh, I've got two, I've got two of them, and I never complain about loose green or, or creasing or whatever on Chrome XL because that's, that's Chrome XL. It's stupid to complain about it. If you want to risk that, then don't. Don't get Chrome Excel, blah, 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 blah. Um, but they, yeah, like on the on the chart break and stuff, like it's, there's no, there's none of those deep green creases or whatever that you'll normally get with, with Chrome Excel. Um, I which I've been told is a fluke not, and there are plenty of grainy Vibergs <laughs> out there and I'm sure there are, but like the, the fact remains, like, I, I don't know, these are my only, I've got two Vibergs service boots and I think they're my only Chrome Excel boots that don't have like a little bit of greasy loose green on and you don't like them. <laughs> I thought you were just gonna. You were making a. You said you had a three thousand word script to trash them. No, no, no. It's not. No, it's it's no, about like why is why it why it matters so much to some people. Oh, and, I see. You know, for, for I'm not one of those people who. Uh, you know, wants to wear something that embodies an unbelievable amount of skill. I mean, I I respect it. But like I said, I I really am a three hundred dollar boot yeah. guy. Like after that, I'm like, this is this is good, you know. But but I, like I said, I respect where Viberg is, and I I just want to be able to explain them, because uh, you know even even before I started the the channel, um, I'd say when when I say I wanted to do stuff with boots and reviewing boots and content about boots, it'd be like looking forward to, looking forward to that Viberg one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. And I yeah. confess, when I first got it, this is, uh, again, this is, this is like month three or something. I, I didn't get it. I didn't understand. Uh, I wasn't able to contextualize it properly. Um, and uh, again, this is not my magnum opus because that I really do have like an hour documentary in me to do on Viberg. But I'm I'm trying to at least do them more justice. Let's crowdfund. Than I had Can we do a crowdfund uh, mm -hmm. called Weiberg? <laughs> <laughs> No one steal Weiberg. That's such a good title. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nick. I'm going to wrap it up here. Unless yeah, there got, was something I, that we missed. Or you got I something? did. I had. I had one question, and I was. I was waiting. Yeah, you were, I, I was. Um, I shouldn't have talked about Chrome Excel that way, should I? Am I going to get in trouble? No, no dude. No, we talk. It, it's the Chrome Excel uh, quote lottery is like the most infuriating conversation for me. Not, I wouldn't say. I won't say infuriating. It's it's frustrating because there's so people just as a 
as a general statement, don't have all the information, but anyway, that's maybe a, that, that's maybe a whole other episode. Maybe you, maybe when you uh, do your Weiberg doc- documentary, you can, I'll, I'll do it aside on. Is what I, is what I said a, a fair way of cashing and did I fuck that up as well? Like if my wife's ones, there's like an old greasy, cre- creasy. Yeah. It's, it's, it doesn't I mean, bother me. I'm not, I'm not anti creasy. It's size, it's size, it's cutting, it's pattern. It's like, there's so many different things. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. to, I mean, it could, and it could be any one of those three or combination of three. It could be, it could be leather. It could be a, you know, a spot on the leather that was not maybe, um, maybe the best piece of the leather to go in that spot. I mean, there's just like, there's so many, it's a natural that's, that's product. The and, yeah. 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 I mean, I don't, I'm not even saying I, like chromic cells are terrific very good leather and this it's like skill on the part of the yeah the maybe mostly i mean there it definitely i mean it's not perfect all the time i'll, I'll say it but um it's i very, was it's very good then oh thank, oh, thank you <laughs> it's, it's, it's very good nick it's, you should be proud of yourself i'll take full credit for um just, just get real patronizing for just not for just making it the same way and not trying to ruin it since yeah. it's been the same for 100 yeah, that's the same 15 screen, years yeah. but yeah um that's like vicious, i was watching i was watching your um your the internet likes best xyz lists and i noticed in the end of your video that you said that shinky's cordovan is the best cordovan and i just wanted to understand <laughs> why <laughs> why you said that what i actually said at the end was I'm not saying that these other tanneries don't make amazing leathers as well. And that yeah. Halloween makes great Cordovan and, and uh, you know, who are, someone else makes great suede and they're all good. I'm just putting out a list of people who make really good ones. Um, but yeah, a lot of people really like that. That Shinky Cordovan. Are you the guy who just commented on that uh, video a couple hours ago? It said, Shinky Cordovan looks like plastic. It sucks. Because I got that comment. Like, <laughs> <today>. <laughs> It was you, Let's wasn't see. it? Let me, let me see that. It was you, see. wasn't it? <laughs> that would have been great, though. I can't remember uh, if it was on Instagram or on YouTube or on TikTok. I put the same ones everywhere, but uh, I, I did get that comment today. Well, anyway, I'm, I didn't I didn't mean to be too controversial with that. I was no, no, I, I was just... It, listen, I don't... If you, if you, are, if you legit want to know, the people I know who, who are really into Cordovan, like I said, I don't know that. I don't have much Cordovan stuff. Uh, so this this is just be going by the the quote unquote experts and influences and everyone else that I know that is really into it. And those guys just never shut up about Shinky, uh, Shinky Cordovan. It's different. They say it's the best. That said, I did have a guy, oh, what was his name? He wrote a best Cordovan um, boots article for me a while ago. And uh, he had, he had old and up top and I wanted to move. I wanted to put Carmina up top just because I just met them and I did the whole thing on their quarter bit. And I was like, well, it's all whole in quarter bit anyway. Uh, and he got he got very mad when I <laughs> put put Carmina up. He's like, no, Alden's whole in quarter bit. <laughs> it's the best. I was like, okay, I moved it back. I changed it for him. But he was like, it's not just that whole makes it. It's like the ones, it's the pieces that Alden selects. Um, but I was, I, yeah, again, I was very careful in that video to say, these other tanneries also make great versions of these leathers. I'm just trying to get a broad. You don't spread even have to. I, I, you don't, and you don't have to. I, I'm not. I'm. 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 I'm not we're, tr- on you we're trolling you to bit, some extent. But um, no. I, I was just. I was just curious if there was any. If there was any. Um, I mean, the answers that you get, you gave are fine. Yeah, I mean, it's. Just, it's yeah, different. I guess I don't want to. I guess I shouldn't like say the names of the people, but just like the people I respect the most, like Shinky the most. Well, they talk That's about right. the most. I, just, <laughs> I, I just needed their names and addresses. And the names. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honestly, I could have just said, whole, I mean, look, I did say, I feel so bad using the words like best. It's such like, fuck. Am I allowed to swear on this? I just want to yeah, man, do whatever. Yeah, it's fine. Just like such internet marketing bullshit, just having to do best this, best that. Uh, and this is one of those things where, like I was saying, sometimes I've got to, uh, I've got to do like an internet markety thing to pay the bills. Yeah. So I can do stuff that's like a little more. Nick H cool and I were talking fun. about this question before this conversation, and that answer you just gave was the one we were hoping you would give because <laughs> we think that that's probably the truth. <laughs> it's just like we need to like get some traffic here. You just gotta. You just yep. you've got to do best stuff. I'm sorry. It's funny. I talk to people like like a. Uh, it's funny how how often in conversations like this, Jake from Almost Vintage Style comes up because he doesn't have that many followers. But it just very strong opinions. 
It's just everyone likes to talk about it. Everyone knows him. Uh, he always comes up in conversations I have anywhere I am in the world. Uh, if it's with guys like this, we talk about him. Um, he hates But Chrome my Excel. first interaction with him. <laughs> he sure does. He hates Chrome Excel so much. <laughs> he hates Chrome My Excel. first interaction I had with him was him on a, on a video of mine. It was like I was saying shut is the best leather jacket. And it was like, you know, a 300 word YouTube comment about like how, what the definition of the word best means and this and that and this <laughs> yeah. and that. And I was like, look, I, I get it. I get it. But I'm on the internet. I got to I gotta pay rent. I'm sorry. I know it's yeah, stupid. It's, 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 and it's and what I really too. love is Karl Murawski. He he'll never do a best video. Like it's it's so respectful. Like he, he'll he he's like an unbelievably edu uh, uh, educated, uh, knowledgeable guy on all these matters. But it'll never be the five best denim jackets. It's gonna be five denim jackets I love. Like it, he always does that. He just, he just refuses to play the best game. And like his, I'm like, all right, good to see you. But yeah, well. it's not your full time job, right? If, he, if, he, if it was his full time job, he'd have to sell out, <laughs> start calling things the best. <laughs> That's the thing, though, too, is like your statement of like, oh, sh in this example, Shinky's the best. It's like, that's not even wrong. Like, who, who's to say? <laughs> to Carl's point. <laughs> well, if we're going to be really, if we're going to be uh, sticklers for marketing terms, I mean, if you say, you can say best in marketing because you can say, you just can't say better. Because better is like, you have to like, you have to like qualify, like, why is it better? But if you say best, like you could say like, well, they're all the best. It's like they're all equally as best. It's a, it's a, it's an annoying distinction, but it's funny. I think we have like different laws in Australia Yeah. because I don't think you're allowed to say we are the best pizza shop in, in the country, you know? And, and I was so surprised when I came here, like every block, a store is like the world's best donuts. And I always, and this must <laughs> New just be like, well, according to who, who's qualifying this? Is this, is this term being controlled by anybody? Like, show me, show me your data. Like, <laughs> I don't, I really don't think you're allowed to say that in Australia. At all. Is, uh... There was one, we had one donut place that was called like the greatest tasting donuts in the world. And they, they changed their slogan. And I think, uh, I think the government's like, nah. You can't exaggeration. say that. <laughs> you don't allow exaggerating in marketing in this country. <laughs> this country's built on that. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Uh, Nick, we we normally end the show with, uh, we used to call it favorites, but things that relax us. What things do you that we like? Things that relax us? Yeah, like, historically, it's been like, you know, I like an audio book or a TV show or a movie or a guitar or a band uh, what are you What are you into these days? That's not work related. That chills you out. Can I say meditating? Yeah, that's not a that's not a thing. Or sure, it is. That's kind of that's kind of the the thing is that it's not a thing. Is this, is the idea behind it? Um, but I've gotten really good at meditating lately. It's been, it's been a it's been a long journey with it. I did that thing. It's sort of like how people will talk about like. Oh, I used to be able to bench 300 pounds and they'll just talk about that for 20 years instead of going back in the gym. Like when I was 22, I was really good at meditating and I would, <laughs> I, I did it. I was so good at it. I could feel it like throughout my day. I could tell I was being more present. I was less stressed and all this kind of stuff. Uh, very concrete benefits. And then I spent the next like 10 years, 15 years going, boy, I really got to get back into that. That had a measurable difference. Uh, but this year I've been pretty good at it. Uh, and it's it's been nice. It makes me more present. And uh, it makes me crave nicotine less, which is my big vice. And that's good. And I also have like four anxiety disorders I picked up in New York that uh, I, I helps to control those. Uh, and also makes me more productive at work. And also it helps me sleep and all this other kind of stuff. So that's uh, that's a thing that relaxes me sitting in. That's an amazing one. It's, it's probably the best answer you could have given. It works. <laughs> yeah, I know. I feel like it's sort of like cheating. Like it's like saying what relaxes you most, like a relaxant. Do you, like <laughs> do you use uh, like a meditation app or you just do it solo? Yeah, so that's what that's what changed. So I've actually cut this picture here. So this is the Maharishi. And uh, he is the kind of guy who came up with transcendental meditation, which is the Beatles did it. All the like Jerry Seinfeld does it. All the cool people do it. Uh, and it, but it's very self-guided. It's it's very like you sit there for 20 minutes. It's 20 minutes. You have to do it twice a day. That's what they tell you to do. And it's just pretty easy to forget to meditate in 20 minutes, you know, like, so anyway, this year I did get the Headspace app. They were having a sale and uh, the difference that it's made of, it's very similar, but every couple minutes, the guy goes in my, in my ears goes, ah, don't let your mind wander off. Keep, keep counting your breath. Yep. And that, that made like a 500% difference to it. 
That's all he does. He goes, he goes, eh? we'll plug if your, your if you uh, mind drifts just bring it back just, we'll just plug your referral code in the show notes <laughs> yeah yeah I should, should I? <laughs> but it, it may, it's it's embarrassing how big a difference it made just like having being being watched by a man in in the headphones <laughs> just being like hey pay attention <laughs> i was and, doing uh, yeah i can really feel it. it's it's really it's really helpful i had this i i haven't done it in a while but i was using a different app and I had the same experience where it's like, I'm really glad they interrupted me to remind me to keep breathing and like, don't let, don't let your mind drift off. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Because <laughs> like, how, and I, every time it would happen, I'd be like, how did you know that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It's, and I'm like, well, I'm, by the by, the next time he asks, I'm gonna tell him I was focusing, idiot. And, <laughs> you idiot. Like, right, he, he did get me. He gets me every time. I think they also have options for like let more guided and less guided as well. Like I've seen like guided, semi guided, unguided mm. uh, for when you don't need that much help. But I still need I still need a bit of help with it because I think you're really supposed to do it twice a day, and I just never get around to doing it the second time. And when I do, I just fall asleep. That's one of the problems of being self employed and working from home and meditating in my bed. Is like when I go for that four o'clock meditation, I just, <laughs> just pass out. <laughs> That's a good one. So I, I haven't mastered. I'm not a. I'm not a cosmos understanding uh, Buddha yet. But if I did that at four o'clock, I'd wake up at like three in the morning, just like in sheer panic, not knowing where I was. Mm. No, I'm, I'm a terrible napper. That's out. the that's the problem. If I just nap for twenty minutes, it'd be fine. But I I I can't nap. I sleep. Yeah. Like I I'll go, I'll be out for two hours. Yeah. I'll just turn off my alarm. No, yeah, it no, goes off. I, I like do, I, I'm I not in control of myself. I'll turn off the alarm. <laughs> <laughs> Nick H, you got a favorite? Um, sure. I, I've been into this. This will be, this will be like a, a current favorite. I actually, I, I like free note, the company, like the clothing company lot. And they came out with, uh, I mean, in Chicago, it gets cold obviously. And then, but then they came out with a, they, they have a canvas jacket that they came out with and they made one that was lined in alpaca. And mm. I bought one of those. And I, I just don't buy jackets very often. I got that, and it's it's punishing me because I'm I'm having to break it in, and it's beefy. But it's I'm really into it. I, I yeah. I'm, my last jacket I bought was Freenote as well. Yeah, that shielding lined denim jacket. I really like their stuff. For some reason, like when I look at the pictures of their stuff, I don't. It doesn't really speak to me. But whenever I get the stuff and I actually put it on, I I really like all of it. So it's a yeah, like, that's funny. I'm like I'm, I'm just getting into them now, like pretty recently. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm getting their uh, they've got some canvas pants I wanted. Yeah. So I'm getting those, and I think I had one other. Oh yeah, I got the I got one of the deck jackets last year as well. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm just saying you and I are in a similar part. Like just just lately, I've just been thinking about free note more, and it's funny. Like this is a bit embarrassing, but or sleazy rather is like you know normally I get into brands that do uh, affiliate marketing, like brands that will give me a commission or something if I make a sale for them, if I do a video about them or whatever, you know, like I, I just for business sense, I try to prioritize those. Freenote doesn't, but I keep on making videos about Freenote because I just like them. Yeah. Right? And it, it, that costs me money, but it also makes me feel like I've got a little bit more integrity because I don't, I'm not always getting paid to talk about someone, everybody. I, I, a lot of the time, I'm, <laughs> yeah. a lot of the time, I'm losing money and being bad at business by talking about brands that don't pay me anything. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's good stuff. <laughs> All right, Phil, what you got? This is awkward because it it's so not what I enjoy doing, but I had fun anyways because I got to see my friends. Have you ever heard of this thing called murder mystery thing? I don't even know. I think that's what it's called, murder mystery. It's actually yeah, like, it's like an activity you, you do. You, you go out to it. And you murder places. people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you talk about murder, like homicide. It's so it, have you ever, relaxing. have either of you done a uh, escape room? No, I've always wanted to be invited. I think I, I would feel too embarrassed going. I'll, I'll like, take you me to coming one. up with it, but I'd love someone to say, "Come on, we're going." We're going, Nick. Uh, so <laughs> then I'll explain it this way: you hire an actor to come to your house and play out a scenario, and you everybody at all your friends play a different part in the scenario, and you're you're basically playing a game of Clue. And we did that with some friends I hadn't seen in a while, and it was it was mm. fun. It, it's. It's pretty nerdy. <laughs> like the people that won in our group were like the ones you would have guessed would have won because they're really into 
you know, escape rooms and those types of things. So like, that's, you're... that's what I worry about. Like, I worry that I will be outed as kind of dumb if I go to, <laughs> whether it's an escape room or one of those murder mysteries, like, I'm just not that quick. If it's just I you, wish... you would be outed as dumb. But if there's anybody else, then you're both dumb. <laughs> so you'll, you'll be fine. It's It's really <laughs> not, I don't think you should be feeling that way at all because the first time you do it, it the, the there is sort of like a methodology for how to figure out the stuff but you know once you figure out like oh i see how this game is played the next time you do it i think you'd mm. be better at it and it essentially this murder mystery is exactly like clue it's like who did it do they have the opportunity and why you know so i don't know it was, it was kind of weird to have like a random strange dude at your house with his chest hair blasting out of his shirt which is the case in this scenario uh or it was and honestly i probably would have had just as much fun just hanging out with my friends but yeah it was a fun way to mix it up <laughs> so well, that favorite not similar. favorite well with wallet business or falls apart phil you can always start your murder mystery business i was so before I went to this, I asked my business partner, Dan, if he'd ever heard of such a thing. And he's like, oh, yeah, I have heard of this mystery murder. I did one. I was like, oh, how was it? And he goes, well, knowing you, Phil, you better get loaded before you go. Because <laughs> <laughs> he knows that I'm just kind of like a hater of fun. Uh, but I, I gave it my, I gave it my best. Because you have to act. They give you like a book. And you're like, you're this. I was a butler. And they're like, you're the butler. And you got to be this guy. And here's your agenda. And you have to like perform. So I give it a full hearted effort. And uh, I had fun. But probably would have rather just hung out with my friends. <laughs> That's funny. You know, when you Such started this, I thought it was like you, you, you were like a... You have a reputation for not liking fun. And you didn't think you would, but it turned out you loved it more than you thought you would, and you would strongly recommend it. But your story is still ending with, I'd rather not have done it, though. Yeah, you know what? Usually I'm very good at uh, being a total hater. Um, and usually on favorites, I'll bring in things that I actually like. This time, nothing was good over the last week, so I just threw you all like, the only close thing I had. <laughs> Grasping at straws. <laughs> I should. The, the real question, fun thing was hanging out with my friends and hiring a babysitter, so I didn't have to have kids and got to you know have dinner with my friends. That would be great, but that's not a fun story. We gotta get everybody to check out Stridewise. Is it Stridewise dot com? Yeah, Stridewise dot com, awesome. Stridewise YouTube, Stridewise Instagram. It's all the same. Everything, right? Uh, yeah, yes. On Facebook and Twitter, I had to go with the Stridewise, but no one goes on there anyway. Including myself, I just, I just. And if I want to boost your SEO rating for best men's boots, I should search best men's boots and only click on the Stridewise one, right? And then stay there yes, for like I, a couple minutes, you, look through the pages. Stay on there for a couple minutes would be yeah. good. Actually, what would, what actually is really good if you search best boots Stridewise, and then Google's like, oh, this Stridewise guy is a real brand. Really? Okay, what we're gonna teach everybody really how to brand. SEO. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right well everybody thanks yeah. for checking out the episode nick appreciate you so much spending spending all this time with us that was great yeah and appreciate all the videos you make too it. yep thank you and everybody go to his really nice. to the stridewise instagram and comment on what you think about show <laughs> court <laughs> yeah go to yeah <laughs> and roly poly like on the payroll done, <laughs> i've done like one post in the last week on instagram i hate it right now i'm just giving I'm you a hard time like no I, I actually like your videos a lot and i i think i I actually have used them for my own reference, like specifically some shoe care stuff. So I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, that's that's really nice. All right, I'll get you one. Have to get you on a video one of these days, Mister Leather Expert.